Could you imagine I, if I actually I just, like, don't. hit the recording button and started the recap? I almost did that, and it would have felt awkward on re-listen. You could have. I, I could have. It would have felt weird, though. Like, I, I, I feel like I need a lead-up to it. Alex, can you give me a drum roll? Wow. I literally could have picked anyone. Drums? I picked you because I was 100% sure you would say no to me, Alex. You would go, fuck I have a off. Desk. I have a desk? Yeah, but you like telling me no to things. I was confident if I asked anyone else, they would at least consider it. I was so confident you would say no. I do like saying no to you. I know! And I was gonna be like, oh, okay, I guess we have to do it without it. And then make you seem like the bad guy. Because I like socially manipulating you to make you feel awful. Why are we friends? I don't yeah, know. I don't feel like we should be endorsing this. <laughs> this Listen. seems not good. Listen. She's the real bully here. Okay. Is I'm just though? defending myself. I don't know. This sounds like some <laughs> gaslighting. Mm-hmm. Alex, you need to the talk. <laughs> yeah, Alex, Alex, do we need to um hop into a different channel uh to talk about this? We so can that, kick uh... Robert out right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to throw someone under the bus, okay? I really thought Alex uh, would banter it. Instead she decided the one time I want you to say no and you're like, okay, I'll do a drum roll. <laughs> I, I have hidden depths. My soul is immense. I... God damn. Beat me to it. This is not a good lead-up. I was really hoping it'd ramp and I'd have, like, some good seg into, like... The theme going in, and then... I was gonna be like, oh, it's party time, now we get to play! You're... It's you're, like, 30 seconds late. That would have been such a good lead in. That would have been such a good lead in. I had to Google. But anyway, after finally getting out of Fortuny Soul and making your journey through the Vaudelaian Sea and reaching Milo Harbor after. A very errant, untoward, and unplanned murder that you assisted in the solving of. You reached Vicania, the land of plenty, where things were more relaxed. Your time in Milo Harbor was as positive as could be, outside of some small mishaps. And your journey up the Bellajour River towards Artaviste was one of being distracted. Being distracted, and I blame Adarsh. Your journey up the Bellajour River was one of a safe journey and concerning time at civilization, as your time trying to get through Puentamen took a turn as the borders were shut, they were not allowing anyone in or out of the country, or at least the, the town of Puentamen. But after a very tense interaction with Osmond McBrennan, a apparent assassin? Mage? Something who may or may not be working with the poor Robins? You were tasked to find him. You were given a writ and sent on your way. Find him, bring him to justice alive. So Dulcery came, and your journey came slowed to a crawl as Rowan's less than perfect image was tarnished far more by a lovely man who was borrowing his face. But after doing some work and saving a town from an umbral scourge of its own, you were given another ally 
a William Abney, who would be accompanying you, covering paperwork and making sure to cut through as much of the proverbial red tape as you could. And then your journey went very smoothly. A night stopping over in Fairy Key, relaxing, dealing with music and enjoying Lake Everdo. And then two more days of travel till you reached Artavishte. And it was here that, well, things got better. You met up with Garrett's wife, found out the extent of what happened, the missing, the dead, the injured. And more than that, you met up with Garrett's friends. You even had a moderately personal audience with the Duchess herself. But the welcome home party quickly turned into a political one, and then eventually an after party. The next day was spent getting used to your new time, sp staying at the Viacor estate, investigating, looking into things, taking offers. Rowan turning down an offer from one of the Scholars Board professors at the Lucian Ray. A decision that was his showing growth, perhaps, that even now, when offered everything he has ever wanted, he said no just because of the way that it was being offered. Whether that turns out to be a good decision or not, we will eventually see. For the rest of you, it was investigation of the town, of... Ozzy of the attack. As what the day was spent shopping, investigating, and familiarizing. Eventually, the day turned to night. The investigations gave way to relaxation, and Frey headed off to learn what he could from one of Garrett's many, many compatriots, the Lovely and always inimitable Anastasia Shaber. Though her actual knowledge of what was happening in the city left something to be desired. For the rest of you, it was a night of rest and relaxation, a lovely home with a million guest beds. So I would ask unto you all as another day dawns in Artavishta cold, biting, and the threat of snow, sleet, or rain heavily in the air. What are you guys doing? I'm sorry. I fucked that up. Rowan, Strig, Frey, Garrett, and Mira. What are you guys doing? But don't all speak at once. So, if, <clears throat> if I remember correctly from last session, um, we had all just kind of uh, gotten back together, I believe, after yeah. Frey went uh, dancing and... Um, yeah, you had all gotten back and yeah. went over everything that happened. Uh, and then seemed oh, no, great. Frey and, went out with yes, Frey went with uh, that was Stacia. Yes, and then the rest of you stayed back in the vehicle estate for the night. So I know as of last session there were no plans for anything else. So I was assuming we could start the next day, the morning, the next yeah. morning. That is, if there is anything specific anyone wants to do, the day is yours. Until I decide to blow up another wing of the vehicle estate. What? Um, did Preferably. the uh sorry i would just uh, say preferably the wing we're not in but that's all yeah uh did the uh did willis ever end up sending somebody to answer mira's question yeah that is what i was going to um say they did not arrive perhaps sometime later in the morning okay 
Um, can Garrett remind me where we left off on the leads that we were going to track down? Um, I know there was I like believe... a guard we wanted to question or something. Yeah, there is a guard whose name I wrote down. Uh, Amo, Amos, Amos Bennett. Ducal guard um, Amos Bennett. Amos here. Amos, that we wanted. I have an A M O U S. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, that's still Amos. Oh, still Amos. Okay, Amos. Um, uh, that we wanted to get some information out of as to like, hey, why were you so slipshod with what was going on with the interviews? Um, because that seems incredibly sketch compared to everything yeah. else. Was um, not that we need anything more, but just like I I'm just trying to remember. Was there anything else to suggest that like he might have been involved or he might be hiding something, or was it mainly that we that it seemed like like what wasn't there? It's more of a what wasn't there because okay. everything that was uh part of the investigation was like top notch except for right these interviews that were done by this guy okay. so it's like hold up what's what's weird yeah. here because there's been no other leads found yeah basically okay um yeah i guess well okay so i guess like a few things we we need to we're like working on is we got to go question that guy on the he's like our main lead for the uh explosion the, the like terrorist thing um we're waiting on mira's response from willis um we still got to find ozzy although i don't know exactly how we plan to do that um and also we are still carrying all of this magical contraband that we have to pawn off on thaddeus or somebody um so we so might want to go do that also <laughs> I think one of the things we want to look into is that woman who was following Frey. Yeah. Because they were following Frey, I believe, because Frey was asking about um, Ozzy and his target. Yes. Um, so I think these are big loop or our link into that. Yeah. Do we. We don't have much information about her, um, but maybe we could set a trap, use Freya's bait. <laughs> have them have them start looking around again and right, have exactly. streak around have to keep an eye out for that person since they're the only one who saw them. Yeah, and we can also like like set a perimeter or something so that we can if this person tries to make a run for it, then we can still catch him or something. Um Yeah, I mean, that makes sense to me. Um, I guess the question is, which one of these things do we want to do first? Um, I I think... I'm still worried that Ozzy's going to, like, leave, or, like, the trail is going to go cold on him, and, like, we are working on that for someone and also William is like waiting around for us to take care of that I guess so maybe that should be our first priority um, also it seems like this person was trying to hunt down Frey so maybe that is also the most direct danger to us but um. I'm open to other opinions Frey will go along with whatever you guys want to do. I believe Wallace was supposed to be asking about Amos Bennett for us when we last talked to him. Right. Who? Wallace? Wally? William? There you go. William. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Wallace, like, Captain Wallace is working for you at Artemisia. <laughs> I was like, isn't Wallace the pirate? Yeah, I was like, Captain Wallace, though, he ain't, he ain't working for you at Artavishta without payment. I'm sorry, uh, Will William. Yeah, yeah. William. Uh, Bill Abney. William Wallace. 
<laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Neither one of those is correct. Okay. Right. Um, so, so uh, William, there wasn't he supposed to be um, looking into uh, Amos uh, Amos Bennett for us? That's his plan, based on whatever his orders are, which hopefully he'll have by later this morning. Okay, so why don't we wait to hear back from from William on that, and in the meantime, we can um, look into this person who was following Frey. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, do we want to, if we'd like to wait here for the morning, um, then we could probably hear back from William and also uh, on Mira's stuff. Well, we um, do also kind of have to wait for Frey to get back, too. Was Frey out all night? I, I didn't process this, but... <laughs> I was assuming Frey was out. Okay. Um... Yeah, I, I think Frey would have been probably been out all night, maybe gotten back early in the morning. I are, are we is, is this whole thing an in character scene right now? It's a we're in a weird halfway from what I've seen, where you guys are trying to like formulate a plan <laughs> while also having character conversations. So, uh, yeah, at any point during this conversation, Frey could have arrived or been here. I assume you know enough time for him to wake up and have breakfast. He's not getting up before the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I, I imagine Stasia would have let him crash somewhere. Of course. If it was too late. She has probably seven guest bedrooms. Yeah, he appreciates that. Okay, cool. But yeah, otherwise, I mean feel free to chime in. It is like at any point, like we're in a weird halfway where yeah, like I said, you guys are trying to come up with a plan of what you're doing, both in and out of character, so there's a lot of moving parts now that you've reached Artavishta. Yeah. Well, if I may, from what uh, William had told me yesterday, it didn't seem like he knew exactly when he might be getting his orders, so it might be all a bit in limbo at the moment. Okay. Cool, yeah, then it sounds like we probably don't want to wait around. We might want to go try to track down some stuff so do we want to go find this person who was I guess stalking you and and just to be clear you, you want me to play the bait yeah I mean better that you know you're being the bait than to be the bait without knowing about it so well, you could argue that yesterday I was living in blissful ignorance. Um, yeah, you would but, have kept uh, doing that right up until you died. Streak was watching me, right? And it looked to Streak for confirmation. We'll, we'll, we'll be watching you this time, too. I'll, I'll, all right, then. I suppose I can also maybe actually find some lucky person who actually recognizes... Uh, the fellow by his description. Yeah. Or Richelle Blakely. Didn't have much luck yesterday, I'm afraid. Yeah. So, uh, how exactly will we be... Do, like, am I going to be just... I suppose I'll be walking about alone. Are you going to be hiding in the shadows? Oh, if, but you're invisibility, of course. Never mind. Silly question. Uh... Yeah, I guess we could do that. That seems reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> that would come in handy for me, who she might remember. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, I guess I will make... How many people can I do now again? It's four people, right? Uh, yeah. Um, well, Frey can't be invisible, so... I guess... Um, <laughs> He's just gonna be on his own as bait with the rest of the party invisible right behind him. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't. I mean, it works. Oh, I love it. Poor Frey. Does Frey want one of the earrings? Might not be a bad idea to to have have 
Frey have one of the earrings so that we can communicate with them. Yeah. I mean, Frey is the one who doesn't like it, so I guess it's up to him, but... We could get Will again. <laughs> I mean... No, 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 it, it's fine. I'll, I'll wear one. All right, I'll give you mine. <laughs> okay. Really, can, can't we get at least, like, a, a non-magical matching pair? I don't really do the one earring thing. I suppose I can find something that matches closely enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't mind. That, that's... Yeah, we could absolutely find earrings here. I mean, this is Art of Ishte, so I, we can totally find some earrings. Um, I'm sure Viv knows of a great uh, jewelry shop around here. Or you know what? I that's a good thing a for you to do shop. while you're out being bait. <laughs> that's that that is true. Um, I, I actually do have a, a list of items I would like to look for, though. Maybe, maybe another time. <laughs> but uh, sure. there's the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I guess I'm making all of us invisible except for Frey. And uh, Frey will. Frey is going to spend a couple minutes going through his things and finding a. Another earring that is not a perfect match, but at least isn't like the same like color scheme. Okay. I believe I described it as a nondescript silver. And it was very small. Is it like a stud? It's like slightly larger than a stud. Okay. Okay. Frey likes dangly earrings. Okay. Um. Frey likes matchy yeah. earrings. <laughs> He does. He likes matching earrings. I mean, we could probably get someone to make us one. Like now, someone just needs to convince her to pierce like one of his ears like eighteen more times. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Frey will come back down with. You know what? He's not going to come back down with a almost matching earring. He's going to come back down with his hair styled differently, so only one ear is visible. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, oh baller God. move. I love that. Uh, improvise, adapt, overcome. Exactly. <laughs> I love the idea of looking through your like, your like stash of earrings, being like, none of these is a perfect match. Fuck it. I have one ear today. He like braids his hair off to the left. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, um. But yeah. So Frey is now Frey is now good to go. Putting um. on his cloak. Which is fairly flashy, so, you know, he's good at drawing attention to himself. Perfect. Let's go be bait. You say this as if you're also bait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there with you in spirit. Listen, Rowan is a very integral part of the Megazord-esque fisherman here. <laughs> <laughs> Arguably the most important part with the invisibility. Mm -hmm. oh, so. Am I waiting you... here or am I going with you guys? I mean, I did make you invisible, so I guess it's it's okay. up to you, but you are invisible, so. I'll go, I'll go. Yeah. It also sounds like the guy's not going to come anyway. He said he was going to send somebody, so I'm assuming it'll be like texts. Well, I don't remember. Like when we're invisible... Can we see ourselves? No. No. It's a good thing we've got practice at being invisible because how would <laughs> that would be so awkward otherwise? Yeah. Like trying trying to can you just imagine trying to turn the handle on a door? You just, you can't see where your hand is. You just have to be careful. <laughs> I mean it's what is it called like kinesthetic sense? Is that what it, the the thing is? Like you see, if we weren't in a no, game, I would close my eyes, action. stand up, and go try it on my office door. I literally just did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, how hard was it? You don't feel the wall until... Slide down until you find it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't want to go feel up my door, so I guess not. <laughs> um, who is wearing the other earring? Uh, that would Garrett. be me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I would say Garrett's the most ideal person to have on the other end because it's, uh, you know, 
you're not loaded with all of the insanity of murder guilt or whatever the fuck Rowan's go going on or Garrett's alien. murder guilt. Listen, Garrett's murder guilt is much more mature. Garrett just murdered a child a couple of sessions It's mature back. guilt, though. <laughs> I kind of forgot. Anyway, so with that, you guys head out. What is the plan for Frey at this point? To essentially do the same thing he did yesterday, but now air quotes alone? Yeah, yeah. and I think I think we want to start where we left off because that's where that lady found us or found Frey. Or was that lady following Frey from before then? I gonna, know me... that I noticed her in that square. Okay. Well, I will say that, that is where I had been. Jewelry shop that either myself or Viv would recommend would be in one of the nicer districts of the city than basically if i remember correctly that district is more like kind of like the entry point to the city correct uh yes the uh common newtown commons is um is the uh is uh, like the entryway essentially um there's a very not, like let me see if there's any jewelry i'm sure there is i just need to see if we've got it stated um Sorry. There's a lot to go through here. Holy shit. Why did I write so much? <laughs> I really should have put each district on its own page. That's going to be my project for next week. It is in your nature to write so much. That is... That's who you are. Uh, the Artisanal Boulevard, uh, would be probably the main place that you would find nice jewelry in the commons. Uh, it is... I don't feel like I'm spelling that wrong, but spell check's not saying anything, so I guess that's good. Yeah, uh, Artisanal Boulevard. There it is. Uh, it is, um, it's essentially a, like, half of a block that has a few very small, like, jeweler-type buildings, and then also some stalls, where they all kind of, like, converge together to create this kind of, you know, if you get, you know, flea market style, if you get a lot of people together, you know, you might not get the business, someone else will. You might be able to steal someone else's business, get more of them together, more likely to get something, so. Uh, it's not all jewelry, it's sometimes, like, it's all kinds of, like, handmade, like, independently, as opposed to, like, a massive, like, jeweler's, like, merchant-backed company. Everything here is made mostly by small groups, merchants by hand, things like that. Lots of jewelry, crafting, crafts, trinkets, stuff like that. So. It would probably be the best place in the commons if you're looking for jewelry. Well, I suppose starting there would be as good as anywhere. Um... I think, Garrett, you would probably catch Frey thinking something along the lines of, uh, I'm looking for, going for a jewelry. I probably should have asked for a bit of a loan. I'm sure you could spare it. Um, yeah, I'm sure, yeah, we can. I, I was probably going to take out some more money, anyways, from the family coffers. <laughs> for myself because Garrett has literally no monies in his Oh yeah, uh, on no notice uh, Viv could probably get you 
hunter gold, mix of silver and gold. That sounds like so much. That is a yeah, lot. I'm <laughs> Yeah. Every time I've mentioned having like a hundred gold, people have been like, oh my god. And now it's like, oh yeah, no notice. All right, fine. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that's that's something. So yeah, how much did you want to withdraw from the family fund? Full hundo? Um, sure, I'll take out a hundred and I will give uh 50 of that to fray just for now just to kind of cover whatever earring and, and stuff. Okay. Okay. That way Frey can get a very nice earring. Well, we're going to want... Well, I mean, it's going to need know. to match the other one, so... Yeah. Yeah, we need two nice. earrings. We need a matching set to match the other earring. All right. <laughs> um... So I think after Frey gets the money that Garrett, you know, just kind of, I guess, slips him. <laughs> um, just in, in his mind, like, uh, oh, I, I didn't meant to ask you, at least not like that. Oh, yeah, no, it's not a problem. Uh, yeah, no, I, it just, it slipped my mind for, for a second that, that you would probably need a little something to, to cover the cost of the earring because where we are and everything it just it's you know a lot of times i just you know you, you get used to having a certain amount of uh money on your person in the city and kind of forgot what it was like to, to you know not have to worry about that um versus being on the road and having to worry about all that so yeah i apologize for that but no absolutely you're yeah this will this should definitely get you a a, a nice earring to to match a uh, matching set because we got to match both earrings Oh, excellent. I'll try not to not to spend all of it. Though you definitely catch, you know, just lingering thoughts of, hmm, I wonder how many sets I could get out of this. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think Frey is going to start heading that way. Um, kind of like, you know, meandering around the stalls, looking around the crafts, and just kind of like... Uh, just like chatting up the other people standing there or the vendors and, you know, starting to ask about uh, Rochelle Blakely by name because I know absolutely nothing about her. And then also Ozzy by description. Description, mannerism, stuff like that. One by description and one by name. God. <laughs> so weird. Well, what do you know about uh, nothing? But this guy... <laughs> <laughs> All right. One if by land, two if by sea. <laughs> so that's just what reminds me. You try to be smooth about the I whole know, thing. I know. I know. It doesn't seem weird. I know. It's just really funny <laughs> in like you know white room <laughs> description. Yes. <laughs> All right. So Frey begins looking around, asking around, and being as smoothly unsuspicious as he can while still trying to. Drum up attention. Give me a Charisma Connect. Okay. All right. And uh, you are still actually looking for earrings as well, correct? Yeah, that's right. Um, as you are doing so, um, you finally get um, this man who... Uh, kind of not much taller than you, maybe an inch or two, but very wide. Like, it would be like three of you standing shoulder to sh shoulder to shoulder. Big leather apron, kind of dirty. He's got, like, his, his pants are kind of, like, messy as well. Like, he's obviously wipes his hands on them sometimes and is, uh... And he, uh, kind of, like, big burly arms and a bit of a messy beard that looks like it probably is in need of a shave, and he just... <laughs> well, let me make this very clear. I don't know no Blakely. Never met no Blakely, but I've been listening 
I've been listening to you. And he gestures surprisingly daintily with his hands as he does this. Like, for being such a large man with these, I mean, even his hands, like, his arms are big, his hands, like, he could, his hands are big enough that you can, like, fit your whole head in it. And he just kind of gestures and... Seems like you're not looking for people so much as you're looking for things. And things I can help you find. I've seen the way you've been looking at some of these. I've seen the way you've been looking at these uh, emotions to a stall across the street. Saw you uh, glancing once, twice, ten times over at that little display with that necklace in it. You have a keen eye. No, oh, I actually don't. As a kid, I pay to keep an eye out for these sorts of things. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm What am I? <laughs> a patsy on the back. And uh, not very hard. Surprisingly delicate, all things considered, though. For Frey, it's probably still a little, uh, a little on the shooketh side. There's, there's definitely a bit of a, a flare of of annoyance there um, uh, to Garrett, but he he smiles and, you know, laughs along with him. Well, so I nice suppose nice. that means you have an offer then. I or a have lead. many things, but I don't know exactly. You've stared. You went from all the way down there at the end. You've almost methodically spoken to everyone here, looked at everything out on display. I've even had people going into their shops, bringing out custom stuff, but what is it you're looking for? That I couldn't quite piece together. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm looking for something a bit... a bit simple today. Uh, something that matches this, actually. It's merely more why I, I came out. He kind of, you know, he taps his ear with the earring in it. I'd hope uh, another set of something like this. But beyond that, also just uh, something to spark the imagination. He scratches at his chin for a moment as he looks closer and then, like, just holds his hand out. May I? Uh, Frey gives a smile. Put, and yeah, as long as he doesn't put the ear in himself. Um, yeah. yeah, Frey will uh, give a smile and a nod, and he will deftly take out the earring, and he will uh, hold it out to the man. He, uh, he takes it and just kind of rolls it around in the palm of his hand with his thumb, brings it very close, and... Oh, this is kind of the opposite of what you... This is fairly plain, looks to be... Silver. Not a lot of, uh... I mean, it's well made, but... Not even an inset, there's no gem, no nothing. Sometimes the occasion calls for something, something simple. He rolls it again, and then he holds it. He picks up his other hand and holds it. I could make you a marching pad, or I could just make one, get it ready within... He, you can see his face pained as he's thinking. Do you want one or two? And I think a matching pair would be perfect. So just one to match this one. Uh, no, a, a set, a new, a, another set. Two in total. He, he kind of like narrows his eyes, confused at why you would want three total. <laughs> Frey. <laughs> Frey still has his other ear covered, so you can't see that he's not, that he's yeah. only wearing one earring. <laughs> yeah. Um. He rolls it a bit. Oh, 
All right. I can match these. Do you want them silver as well? Same make or could probably do with well, something even simpler. I may be able to acquire some iron or even some polished brass. It would look the same. Uh, no, no, silver would be wonderful. He gives a nod. Silver it is. Uh, I would say I could have it ready. Probably tomorrow, but no promises. And uh, he, he again just kind of meanders his thoughts. Two days. And Paladin, yes. and uh, yes, he gives a he gives a reassuring nod to himself. You pay half now, half when you get back. You can have them made. Uh, what would the cost be? Since you're getting a set, I'll save you a little bit. Uh, he meanders numbers in his head, and you can see obviously that he doesn't negotiate a lot. So he, like, he definitely spends longer than you would expect for something like this. One hundred fifteen silver. A hundred fifteen it is. Let's see, you said half now, half when I pick it up. Uh, make it fifty now. You can bring the other sixty-five when you pick it up. All right, excellent. And Frey will go through his coin purse and crying a uh, you said sorry 50 silver or 50 silver is five gold so oh okay okay yes uh he will pass over five gold then he um he kind of uh starts counting it and gives a smile see you day after tomorrow it'll be ready Excellent. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing your work. Does, is he keeping the other earring or is that going back? He seems to be playing to keep the other earring right now. Uh, Frey would... <laughs> In order to accurately match it. Frey would hold out his hand and... Uh, the, but surely you don't need the, uh, the earring with you. I'd like to keep it with me, of course. Oh, um... I... I can... It is very obvious that, you know, he pause. Oh, one moment. I need to see if I have something of any sort of similar make, size, or style that I could instead use as a reference. All, all right. And uh, he takes it, uh, leaving the stall into the building behind. Does the building look like it's one that's, like, open for customers? Um, it's, like, the door is propped open. There is a, like, you can see where there is a, um, a fire inside, things like that. Like, there's obviously, like, you know, a, a nice little fire to keep it warm because it is a very biting cold morning. But, um, for the most part, like... It's obviously technically open, but a lot of the people who are doing this merchant work that have stalls set up, people are just going to the stalls. So okay. it probably wouldn't necessarily be a faux pas, but... Well, Frey will wait by the stall then. Um, when... <clears throat> when Frey... Uh, or no, you know, I will sneak up kind of behind Frey while invisible and with my best stage whisper so as to not freak them out uh, we'll say that you know if if the guy does a good job with the earrings if Frey wants to get something a little nicer instead of because because obviously I got that feedback from them saying that the uh, 
trying to order something simplistic is anathema. <laughs> so, you know, you, you can tell him that, it, like, if he did a good job, that you'd, you'd like to order a more intricate piece. Ray, um, Ray kind of, like, you know, is idly looking through some of the pieces on display and just kind of, you know, like an, an appraising nod as he looks over this and that and says, oh, I think I could be quite satisfied with, uh, with testing out their artistry. <laughs> and I'm sure expense will be no issue at all. Out. Three more minutes go by while you're waiting, looking, listening to Garrett invisibly talk to you, and then uh, the man arrives back and holds his hand out and uh, rolls the earring, which looks infinitely smaller in his hand than it does in a normal human's hand, back into yours. I have something with a similar style and then he gives a nod at that point can definitely make it work it may not be perfect but I promise you you will not be able to tell the difference I look forward to seeing your work thank you and I'm, what what was your name sir Marco and he gives a... He holds a hand out to shake yours. And Frey will shake his hand. His hand is massive compared to yours. It's ridiculous. And, like, he he has a very... Like, he's obviously a big, strong dude. But, like, he has a surprisingly, like, soft handshake. You wouldn't expect it from him. He gives him an appreciative smile. And, well, I shall be back in... Uh, in two days, then, with the rest of your coin. Morning after next, I will await it with your earrings. Thank you kindly, and well, and hope you have a very, um, a very successful rest of your day. He gives a nod and then calls over a, um, a younger woman who is also wearing a leather apron. And they begin talking about something as you're walking away. Okay. Um, and Frey will put the earring back in. Right. And I guess uh, first confirm that he can still communicate with Garrett. And then go back to his rounds, I guess. And every so often, just kind of like, you know, check in with Garrett. Uh, if, you know, they've spotted anything yet. Along with that, I think Garrett would also pick up a lot of kind of, like, idle observations that Frey kind of, like, instinctively makes in his head. Like, he is very observant. He, uh, watches people, kind of, like, you know, analyzes it, and kind of, like, there's this sense that he kind of, like, plays out in his head how he would best approach them in a way that would make them warm up to him. Like, that's kind of, like, a lot of his thought process that Garrett might pick up, that a lot of, like, what Frey puts out is very manufactured. He has, uh, he has broken human interaction down into a fucking algorithm. Ugh. Oh. Sounds about right. <sighs> Righto. And the journey continues. <sighs> Much of the rest of the morning is spent looking, asking, making your way. Are you heading all the way back to the um the plentiful pantry? Uh, yeah, I think he would kind of, like, retrace the same steps he took yesterday. Alright. And the rest of you are just staying nearby and watching. 
<laughs> How long does invisibility last? Four hours. Let me make sure. I think that's right. Hour uh, per caster level. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Instead of just watching Frey, can I like do some rounds and scope out and see if I see the woman anywhere? Not necessarily around Frey, but just like walking around a bit. Sure. Give me a uh, give me an int notice. Let's see what uh, a streak heads off on his own. Are you telling anyone, or are you just heading off? I mean, I'm gonna assume if we're all invisible, I probably can't find anyone. So. <laughs> you guys are all kind of <laughs> sticking together, and then all of a sudden you're like, "Oh man, Streak's been quieter than usual." Streak. That is. Streak. Streak. Yeah. <laughs> He's just gone. Oh no. For what it's worth, whenever I'm invisible, I think like with other people, I usually have like, like I don't know, fireflies or like some like whatever something that shows okay. where. I oh am. wait, would we still be able to see like, Rohan's like, glow while we're invisible? I mean, it's broad yes. daylight, though. Um, I would say if you knew what you were looking for, yeah, even in broad daylight. Okay, yeah. then I'll probably give like him a tap on the shoulder before I just disappear. Okay. Just cool. to let him know so that he doesn't panic. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right. So with that, uh, you do head off. Onto your own journey to hunt, looking for the woman that chased you down yesterday before you lost her. The rest of us technically don't know what we're looking for, but I assume if somebody's following Frey, we'll like we'll notice. So, I would assume, yeah, given that you guys have the vantage point of literally anywhere you want. Right. Exactly. Um, about another hour goes by you're probably about two and a half three hours into this it's late morning closing in on like noon at this point um, Strieg you have spent the better part of probably half an hour looking on your own and there have been no hide nor hair of this woman but while Frey is still asking and watching you do you do find someone who has they're seemingly shopping, but then you notice them a second time. And that third time crossing Frey's path. Not necessarily obviously, but, you know, they are obviously enough that it seems like either a very rare coincidence or they are doing something. Uh, seems like a regular guy you can't make out a lot bundled up multiple cloaks uh, heavy wool hat on cloak up on top of that great on the following right. um he just kind of like stops at the occasional stall or just talks to someone but at one point he cuts through based on the way Frey might be going and like you watch as um Frey actually walks maybe five or six feet away from him where he's sitting next to someone who is uh, who is washing their face in warm water and he's just like you can't make out exactly what he's saying but it just sounds like he's just like oh you're fucking crazy dude this now and he and the gentleman washing his face is just I better clean than fucking dirty better fucking cold than dirty too and they just kind of bicker a little bit, but as soon as Frey is, you know, out of eye shot, he, without saying another word, stands up and heads in the opposite direction to where, uh, heading the direction Frey came from. Mm hmm Okay. Still following? Still following. Um, you watch as he goes and... He walks past four or five Ducal guards and then finally meets with another one. And the Ducal guard immediately starts walking in the direction that Frey was, that he pointed to, where Frey was headed. Oh boy. 
Okay. Uh, do I see Rohan's glow anywhere? Uh, no, they're down the street. Okay. Like, you guys went in opposite directions. Uh, so, and these two are splitting off. Who are you following? The guard or the lookout? I'm going to assume Frey can talk himself out of this situation. I'm going to keep following the lookout. Okay. Uh, Frey has plenty of backup. The lookout heads down an alley, and then he kind of looks both ways before ducking into a very nondescript door. He knocks twice and then hits a very, like, quick, like, jiggled handle and slips it. Are there like any windows on the building or anything? Uh, there is a there is a single window that's a bit fogged up from the cold. Um, that is on the far side. At least that you have um, access to. Again, you are in an alley, want so me to look, see if I can see anything. Are you gonna like rub the fog and like almost ice formation off, or try and see without doing that? Like. On one of the bottom corners, very <laughs> small. <laughs> Try and just get just enough for an eyeball. Yep. All right. Uh, give me a int notice. You can see the lookout in the. Uh, he is over by what looks like a small kitchen area. And he is standing and nervously pacing, and you see a hooded figure who puts down five silver pieces. And then the guy snatches it and quickly heads out. Uh, as the man begins to stand up that handed him the silver pieces, you can see that that is Osmond McBrennan. Ah, uh, yes. Holy shit, you have your- Bastard. Shoot him, execution attack. <laughs> Is Ozzy also heading out, or is just the lookout leaving? Uh, the lookout left. Ozzy is heading to another room now. Okay. I'm gonna... Probably hang out by this house for another ten minutes, just to see if Ozzy leaves immediately, and then I'll head back to the others. After about 10 minutes, as you're starting to leave, um, you see a Duke Hall guardsman come to the door, very quickly knock, and head in. Well, I'm going back to my window then. <laughs> um, from the other room, Ozzy sits down again and sits across from the Ducal Guardsman and you cannot make out what they're saying. You can't even read the lips. It's still so fogged up. You can barely make out his face. But he is... They are... The body language you're able to read seems to be a heated conversation, at least from the side of this Guardsman. Um... Ozzy at this point has sat back in the chair and has put both of his boots up, crossing his legs on the table. And he says something and then just points to the door and the window. Uh, not directly at you or anything, but like just kind of like pointing towards seemingly the exit is the best way to describe it. Just realize something. What you just realize? <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> He's Ozzie. an illusionist too. He could probably see invisible people. And um, he then just kind of yeah. We'll just let we'll just let your observation linger for a while. Thank you, Anarsh. Love it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he kind of just like gestures with his hand as if telling this guard to get on with it. Um. 
The guard then just stands up, obviously frustrated, paces back and forth for a minute, and then turns and yells, I can't! I fucking can't! And then finally, for the first time you really hear Ozzy, and he just, keep your fucking voice loud. Oh, do we hear it, yeah? Cut your damn tongue out. Sit. And uh, they sit down and discuss again. Now Ozzy's sitting up and leaning, his hands steepled with his elbows on the de- on the uh, table. Um, he, uh, after a moment, just kind of stares. It's so awkward to try and describe this without the conversation happening. <laughs> Um, so he stares forward. You can see the back of the guard and a vague, impl- like, intonation of Ozzy's face. And he points again at the guard and the door. And, uh, after maybe another minute, the guard gets up. Like, angrily, the chair he was sitting on falls back. And Ozzy just... All right, wait. Wait just a minute. And the closest thing to a yell that you've really heard him do. Wait just a damned minute. And the guard finally sits back down. You see Ozzy... Quickly head over to another room, disappear for about 30 seconds, and come back with what seems to be a coin purse. He throws it on the, uh, on the table. Uh, the guard looks down at it, looks up at him, and as he does, with a practiced speed, Ozzy immediately draws his dagger right into the guard's throat. Oh, shit. Okay. He proceeds to take out from the large coin purse what seems to be a giant rag or a tattered cloak, and then as he's pulling the dagger out, wrap it around his neck, and then start pulling the lifeless body away into one of the other rooms. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, I wasn't expecting that. (laughs) Um, okay, I'm going to go back to the others, I guess. (laughs) All right, right away, you're just heading back. Well, when you say it like that, I feel like I should hang out for another minute. Hey, whatever decision you want to make, I just want to clarify time frames. Because while all this is going on, the guards are also closing in on Frey. I know. How far away am I from everyone else? Like, how far, how long will it take me to get back to them, roughly? Probably, so you've been waiting for about, you're probably in the 15, 20 minute range. Yeah, I'd say probably about, if Frey's continuing on the pace he's been, and you're probably about 15 minutes to get back to him. And do I have an idea, roughly, I know numbers aren't my thing, but about how long I would have left on invisibility? Like an hour? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna head back, but I'm going to, like, very clearly like do a loop around this house so I can remember where where it is, what it looks like, what the other buildings are, etc. Okay. And then head back. A corner, like back alley. It seems like it was probably at one point part of a nicer house, and they essentially cordoned it off and were like, hey, we could rent out our back room by just putting up this wall where a door used to be. Okay. I don't love medieval landlords. 
and you head back. Meanwhile, pray you continue your wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, I forgot. Ignorance is bliss. Frey, uh, you continue your jaunt asking around about the man described as Osmond McBrennan and the woman known as Rasheel Blakely. For one reason or another, you haven't had any warnings or anything. It's quiet and as relaxed as can be on this biting cold late morning to closing in on noon. The rest of you without Strig are continuing to follow Frey as he makes for makes himself as good a bait as possible. Um Garrett would be checking in every so often with Frey to let him know that there's nothing really much that we're noticing. Um would we notice the uh, the guards heading in towards Frey? Uh, yeah, if the guards like started to like come down on him, yeah, you'd notice. Okay, is that what they're doing? No. Yeah. Okay, so we I said you that you yet. would notice if it happened. Okay. Um. Okay. After uh, a little while, after Strieg leaves, you do see that there is uh, there is one. To call guardsmen who begins kind of following behind Frey. And then you see him taking out a small journal and writing some notes down in it. Okay, well that is something that I would relay to Frey. That we're seeing this ducal guard, like, taking notes. Frey, um... Frey would think back. He doesn't seem threatening, right? Uh, more like recording who you're talking to, what you're saying. Doesn't look <sighs> like he's actively going to attempt to uh, assault you. Uh, all right, then, I suppose... We, we do supposedly have the guards trying to be out looking for this guy, so maybe not all of them have gotten our uh, information or description. So he's like, hey, who's this guy who's asking about the guy that we're supposed to be looking for? He could, uh, yes, yes, could just be a man doing his job. Uh, but I will continue on as is then. Uh, sounds it's good. Rather cold out here, though. <laughs> As he rubs his hands together. You There's can... no sight of that woman as uh, Lee described. Or not Lee, Strig described. No. Lee as Strig. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, there is no sign of that woman. After another maybe... 15, 20 minutes, it seems like Frey has really garnered a uh, a follower with this Duke Hall guard who has been consistently following him and taking notes. Uh, if you guys are not acting on that, then... I kind of want to confront the, the guard, but by doing so, I would get rid of invisibility for all of us. Yes, you would. Yeah, so I'm not going to do that yet because I don't know what happened to Streak. I think Frey might and kind of, you know, checking in with, with Garrett first. Let's just see how intent he is on, on following. And Frey is going to turn off of the crowded street and into like a, a cross alley. Okay. Uh, places where there are not a lot of crowds. Alright, and you cut through to the next street. Uh, it seems that the rest of you would see the Ducal Guardsmen waiting at the end of the alley. Not, uh, not continuing to follow.
We just stopped at that alley. He's not going any. Correct. Yep. Stopped where Frey cut into that uh, the cross street. Okay. So the question is, did the group get into the alley before the guard got there? Or the guard's the guard, not like, standing walking? in the alleyway okay. or anything. He's okay. just nearby watching it. Like. Okay. And Frey will continue out the other side and turn onto the other street. All right. Back at it. Uh, the rest of you, are you watching the guard, or are you following Frey, or are we splitting up some more? Um, I think I would still stay on Frey. I, I yeah, you stay on Frey because I can communicate. Frey can be like, oh, hey, I'm turning down, you know, Newtown Street, and then, oh, hey, I know how to get there, and then I can just kind of meet up. So I'll yeah, stick on the guard. Yeah, because I, I, I think... Especially if the guard's not following, like, down the alley or whatever. I, I think we still want to know, specifically if we see Ozzy or, or uh, Blakely. So, I think right. still need somebody on, on Frey. So, I'm going to do that. Yep. Sounds good. I will. What's Mira doing? Uh, I would think that she would probably stay nearby Frey in case he needs, like, protection. <laughs> If somebody's gonna get punched. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. The most threatening bodyguard, one you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Garrett, you watch, and over the course of the next few minutes, the guard finishes writing something up in his journal, puts it back into a pouch or something in his cloak, and then he begins heading back in the direction you came from. I will continue to follow him. Alright. Shriek, at this time, you are making your way back in the direction that Frey was going. <laughs> Great. You guys pass each other and have no idea. We <laughs> I run mean, into yeah, each other. Happen. Happen. Uh, well, we run into each other. On a major street where you're both trying to avoid people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're both trying to avoid people. I tell well, you what, I tell you what. Other. Both of you roll a d20. If you roll the same number, you roll, you run into each other. <laughs> How about that? Let's see what happens. <laughs> Is it slash uh, R? Uh, yeah, slash R space D20. You thought I feel too low. It, it, it does, but <laughs> I, 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 listen, they're both good at avoiding people. Oh, I'd, like to use my, so I'd like to use my scene <laughs> reroll. <to, laughs> That's not a skill check. You don't get Do to reroll that. <laughs> Do not. No, I can't. It's not a skill check. I can't. I can let. You know Even what? You know what? Was, now, that, now, that, now that people are telling you not to, I want you to. Just, just one more for the heck of it. No. Moments before Ozzy murders us all. Do not use your reroll on this. No, I'm not going to. I, I, it's fine. <laughs> So, Shriek, as you are heading back, you do see, um, the... Wait. Yeah, you do see the Ducal Guard that, uh... That you were trailing before, or... No, uh... Oh, shit. Did Shriek ever see the Ducal Guard? He did not. I did, and then He's... I... No, I saw him for a minute, and then I decided to keep following the Right, lookout. yes. Okay. Uh, so you do see him heading back in your direction. Interesting. With a do I see not a rushed pace, no? but a power walking pace. You don't see anyone else. Well, I'm gonna turn my ass around and follow this guard then. Well, turns out they don't need to run into each other. It's the blind leading them next to the blind. <laughs> oh. Heck yeah. You make your way back to uh, you continue following while Frey, you are continuing to drum up your. You know what? We we know it's dangerous now. We can uh, we can switch back. There we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, you continue to drum up your as much of a hubbub as you can without it seeming like a hubbub. Meanwhile. The, um, I'm sorry, uh, Rowan and Mira behind you somewhere are keeping their eyes peeled as best they can, or at least you hope, because Garrett's giving you the, uh, 
Garrett's giving you the lowdown while not even being there anymore. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm just oh, following this guy. He's, uh, you know, actually, do we have we seeing as how we're now in the big city? Have we run into a limit of the distance of the earrings? Doesn't seem like it. Nice. I just wish we had more. Otherwise, you continue your asking Frey while they continue watching. Uh, unfortunately, Rowan, you and Mira are reporting nothing else right now. At least it doesn't seem like it. Okay. Maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> Maybe. I'll let you guys uh, ruminate on whether or not that's a good thing. Garrett, you and Shriegus turned around that don't know you're near each other. Both follow and... Gary, uh, yeah, we'll do this from your perspective. You watch as the Ducal guardsman who had taken those notes uh, heads down and then eventually turns down an alleyway, making his way to an end alleyway intersection, and he kind of turns around almost nervously, first at the alley's entrance and then again at this door, which he quickly knocks twice on and then jiggles the handle as he opens, shutting the door quickly I behind him. We'll proceed to make my way to the window of this abode. It is fogged we're over. We're just one by one gonna all do this, <laughs> and that's how we're gonna communicate. It is the fucking Groundhog Day exposition? Oh, and he just keeps piling up fucking Ducal card yep. bodies. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, stealing, no. Watching guards die, that's cool. <laughs> um, you watch through the mostly frosted because of the... It is very... Um, like, it's very shaded here in an alleyway, but the frost has started to die down and melt, but it's still a little frosted over, but you do see as the guard is sitting... You see the back of the guard sitting across from Osmond McBrennan. Uh, and I has... recognize it, Ozzy. Yeah, I will relay that information to uh, Frey that the the Ducal Guard is meeting Oz Ozzy. Do you want us to come your way? Um, yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that. Uh, wh where where are you? I will have been relaying streets that I've been passing and whatever as I've been going, so hopefully Frey knows Okay. how to get back, you know. Uh, well, back to the main alley, down the, take the right and the left, and not the left and the right. <laughs> Shriek, what are you doing at this time? Yes. You followed him and you watched this exact same ritual again. Hmm. Did you also go to the window to watch at that point? Both of you are squeezed up. <laughs> bump into each other. <laughs> in this one corner of this window. Yeah, probably. Garrett, as you are leading there watching, you feel something bump into you. I look around. <laughs> do I see anything? No. I cautiously whisper, Greg, is that you? Garrett! Yeah. I found Ozzy's a guy. In there. Yeah, oh, no shit. Thought, I found he already killed a guy. There. Oh, he already killed you, someone? I found him. Yeah, I've been here for like an hour. <laughs> this is where you ran off to. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You wow, you were really good at this. <laughs> I don't know if I should say thank you to that. <laughs> it, it, I, I meant it as a compliment. I apologize if if you're taking it as any other way. Um, I, I, anyway, what's he doing? What do you see? What do we see? What do I see? Uh, he's just kind of talking to Ozzy right now. That's all I see. Uh, so he far. seems to be going over the notes from the journal. Uh, looks like he's going over the notes from the journal with with Ozzy and the guard. 
or the guards going over the notes with the Ozzy, the Ozzy's going over the notes with the guard, one or the other. Do we know what's in his little book? Oh yeah, he was, those were notes he was making about Frey, who Frey was talking to and what they were saying and everything. Oh, great. I'm assuming he's not having the notes t taken specifically because it's Frey and he recognized Frey and more just like, hey, anyone who asks about me, you know, follow him and take notes. But uh, the fact that he's got uh, guards on the payroll, that's not good. Um, but I did yeah. I did reach out to Frey and they should be bringing Mira and Rohan with them back this way. Okay. So, like, he did already kill a guy today. Great. Love it. That is really not great. I will be relaying that back to Frey that we found Ozzy and he's already killed a, a guard or a guy. Uh, did you say it was a guy or a guard? It was a guard? Guard. He already killed yeah. a guard. He already killed a guard. Are you implying that guards are not people? Well, I mean, there's a difference between killing some random hobo guy okay, and yes. having killed a guard, right? Sure, yes. <laughs> of course, yes, lives have different value based on their contributions to society. You're the A cab guy, you can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it just, it's, it's not that it's... No, I know what you mean. It's, it's yeah. a bigger, it's a bolder thing for him to kill a guard than right. some random dude who he doesn't give a shit about. Exactly that, yeah. <laughs> so you guys are just waiting, and Frey is turning to head that direction? Um, yeah, when when Garrett relays that, uh, that a guard was killed, there's definitely a sense of alarm from Frey. Um, and he will, yeah, I think he's going to backtrack back to the alley that he had come down. And while he's going down the uh, uh, the alley, he's going to kind of, you know, whisper, uh, Mi Mira, Rohan, you're still here, right? Yes. All right. Huh? Uh, G Garrett, Garrett found Osmond, um, and we're we're going to go meet him now and apparently someone has already been murdered. Um Okay. None of us, right? No, no, no. Um one of the one of the guards one of the city guard. I don't know why they would. Um but Okay. Um but yeah, and Frey is going to Try his best to follow Garrett's instructions in a city that he does not know yet. All right. Um, after another moment, uh, Osman gets up. Um, not necessarily barking orders, but it, like he leans down. Uh, as he stands to the other side of the table, so he's on the same side as the guard who had been taking notes on Frey, and he very carefully, while gesturing with the dagger that he pulled out of a gentleman's throat less than an hour ago, kind of, like, just points a couple of times. It's perfectly clean, but he just kind of, like, taps a couple of times on the table, points at the, uh, back room, and then says something else. You cannot make out anything as their backs are turned to you. And then he pats the guard on the shoulder, and Osman heads out. Like, towards the front door that's right next to us? It, other side, like, you know. Oh, by the way, door I, here. Ozzy's heading out, or the guard is Door out? here, window here. Ozzy was heading out, he said. Yes, Ozzy is heading out of the room. Of the building. Leaving the guard there. By the way, I will, when Frey tells me that that they found Ozzy, I will remind him that Ozzy can probably see through invisibility. So, like, we do need to be extra careful. Like, also hide, not just rely on 
invisibility. Well, crap. I've literally just had my face in the giant wind in the front of the window the whole time. <laughs> um, I'll turn to streak. It's and, okay. And I did it for a long time. <laughs> yeah. So Ro Rohan says apparently that uh, Ozzy can s possibly see through invisibility. Well, fuck. Why didn't he call me out for looking through his window? I don't know. He said it, he, he possibly can. Not that he's guaranteed to be able to, so. Well, are we following him, or? Yeah, we should definitely try to follow him. All right. You are leaving the guard alone in the alley building and following Ozzy? Yes, I want to try to be a little more stealthy instead of just walking around and trusting in the invisibility. Garrett rolls a one, proceeds to trip over an empty beer bottle, in, face plant in the middle of the alley. In and that case, yeah. Over and breaking the, breaking the, uh, give me a deck sneak then. Should I also, if I'm going to be sneaky, sneaky? Yes. And we're going to go back to... And that is a roll of... Do we oh. run into each other? <laughs> Oh, there's a there's a bit of a three legged race going on with you two. Oh. Listen, it's hard being invisible. Um, Garrett, I will say, you could roll better and have something less bad happen. I could have phrased that better, but it's funnier the way I did. I I was very careful to phrase that funny. Um, there now is remember, potential for a better roll if you wish to reroll. I also can't get stuck in an ambush. You cannot. So, but I, I will, I will attempt to reroll that because it's a skill check. If we get into actual combat, that wouldn't be skill checks. I will attempt to reroll that, and please don't be like my previous rerolls that have been like a four. I will take it. That is much better. As you head down, he is not going down the. Um, so he starts to go down the same way he came, and then immediately once he gets onto the main street. Uh, Ozzy takes a right and cuts down onto the next alley. Uh, how close behind are you guys following? Like... Hmm. I want to say we're a little bit of a ways back, but at the same time, we would probably miss him make that turn onto the other alley if we weren't close enough. Uh... I mean, there was probably, I'd say... 25, 30 feet between the two alley entrances, so you could be at okay, least so that far back. Yeah, I was going to say we were probably... I wanted to say we were about 20 feet. Okay. All right. Um, and you see him go down, and then he cuts left after about another 40 feet right near the edge of the next alley, where it cuts to the next street. Okay, I will let Frey know that, hey, we left the house... And we're heading, you know, down this alley, and he's cutting down this other alley, and... We're heading south, suspect on foot, on the alleys. <laughs> Basically, yeah. I'm and I will also... very confused by these, by these directions. <laughs> oh, so, and you are still I'd following? grab a guard, but apparently we can't trust them. Yeah, we'll still follow. Right. Um... You continue to head, still trying to trail about 20 feet or so behind, and as soon as you turn down where he turned the second time from one alley to another at that intersection, he is standing there, staring directly at you. Uh-oh. Yeah. We need to have a little bit of a talk now, don't we? And, uh, at this point, he begins- he pulls out a dagger from his belt and just begins gesturing with it as he paces back and forth. You want, uh, on Blakely's play role? That she's been dealt with. I was under the assumption that everyone was fine with the new management, but here we are, so... 
What are you working for? Is this a Blakely problem? Does he not recognize me? Doesn't seem to. Is he looking directly at us? Or just in our general direction? In your... He is, he is obviously looking at where you are standing. And he's looking between the two. He can see that there are two people. I'll, I'll whisper, I don't think he actually recognizes us. I think he just sees a blob, like an invisible blob. Magic, you know. I'll hear you. <laughs> oh, so I'm, like, I'm whisper. I mean, can he hear? I don't know. But um. So, like, should we shoot him or? Well, it's it's it wouldn't be a. I'll, I'll say louder. No, this isn't about Blakesley. So that. What do you want? You've been watching me, uh, saw some of my work, as a matter of coin, be paying off. This is about Plentamin. What about Plentamin? Plentamin. He kind of narrows his eyes. He narrows them just a little bit more and he begins, like, oh. thinking, and as he does, he kind of, like, scratches himself a little bit, like, on the chin with his dagger. He, uh... He seems like he's trying his best. Is this about, uh... Hired by, uh... Hired by the elect. Regent. I'm sorry, was he asking if he about yeah. us being hired by the yeah yes yeah hired by the region ah so he's sort of bright after me now oh what do I have to do to make this go away you could try turning yourself in Um, I am basically screaming at Frey, like, uh, he, not only can he see us, but he's he's probably getting ready to run or fight us. Uh, hurry up, please, por favor. Oh, well, maybe not por favor, but, you know. Um. Yeah, Frey will, um, uh, pass it on in a, a half-panicked note. Honestly, kind of probably not even bothering to whisper at this point to... Uh, Mira and Rohan. Oh, also that Blakesley is dead. I think Frey will stick to the important stuff right now. Uh, now note, if the if either of the invisible two people start running or doing anything physically strenuous, invisibility is lost on everyone. Yeah. Uh, speed block. Well, we're about to shoot the guy, so... But we haven't yet. We haven't yet. All right, so... <sighs> that you're about to shoot him, like, if you do that. So just, you know. Yeah. What I think I'm going to do is, uh... Just warn that, uh... He kind of narrows his eyes. Wait. Get up, Bright. You're from those... You're those damned people that I ran into on the other side of the river. And he's onto us. <laughs> Is that what this is all about, then? This would be a great time for a time skip. <laughs> a great time for what? I'm sorry? A time skip. <laughs> we just... It's all right, two weeks later, we, It's two weeks later, fine. everyone's dead, and Garrett is just alone and miserable. <laughs> oh. But, but did Ozzy also at least go? <laughs> So, You're okay with all of us dying as long as he dies too? Damn. I'm not okay with all of us dying, but if he's also dead, then at least your deaths were worth something. Mean something. <laughs> you know, they um, mean something. So, he, um, he kind of, he doesn't seem at all worried. He turns his back to you, walks a couple feet away, still just kind of like, almost like idly juggling with the dagger. <sighs> You know, if you're busy, if that's what this is about, then, uh, perhaps you should go and, uh, cover for your friend, uh, you know, the, uh, the fancy earrings and all that. 
Well, it's been looking for me in Blakely all morning. You see, uh... It just so happens the Ducal Guard saw him kill someone, another guard, this morning. And, uh... Well... You don't really want him to be a wanted man now, do you? So, we can keep playing this dance, or... You can go and... Deal with that body. He shrugs and turns and starts walking towards the end of the alley. I shoot him. <laughs> You're drawing your bow and taking a shot? I am seriously considering it. Is anyone thinking this is a dumb idea before I do this? Do it. Uh, I would also like to... I'm assuming Frey is telling us this stuff is happening. Is this happening? No, yeah. Frey is panicking. Frey okay. is not going to, to be delivering the play-by-play. <laughs> Okay. Can I take a simultaneous shot with Garrett, assuming I, like, hear him do it? Or just, yeah. Because I had I... my crossbow ready. Yeah. Righty, was not expecting this. <laughs> but okay. Uh, you are both <laughs> taking shots. Yep. Both of you roll attacks. I just streak of a plus eight to hit. Because I dumped everything into shooting. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was a dirty, dirty min maxer. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Streak's not smart, but he's good at one thing, and he's very good at that one thing. As you, Streak, you hear Garrett tightening the bow, drawing back an arrow. You aim. As Garrett looses a second later, you pull the trigger on your crossbow. And without missing a beat, he turns to the side, Garrett's arrow flying past him. And then he you f he just ducks and just almost does a bow forward towards you as your bolt goes flying into the street beyond. Did we just randomly hit someone? Not sure, but the oh bolt God. went flying beyond and he just turns. Both of them missed. Oh, yeah, they both missed. This is just such a disappointment. Let me go ahead and see what he's gonna do. Uh, oh, well. As soon as invisibility drops, I would like to cast enlarge limbs on Mira on both of her legs and tell her to run. I think this is oh overkill on the play. Is that gonna oh, help? Oh, such overkill on the play. You can cover more distance. I don't, I don't have, it back. Dude, I don't have quick and prepared. So this is the best thing. I'm gonna pass by this anvil. Oh, okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Mira is now a giraffe, except it's the legs and not the neck. Wait, Robert, the giraffe's I have a got quick long, question. long legs and long neck. Okay, there's a lot of stuff happening right now. One at a time. Someone had a question. Yes. So technically, because we we're invisible, could that have been an execution attack? Uh no. He is on edge, and he knew you were there. Okay, that was it. You're not getting an execution attack on that. All right, enlarge limbs. Uh, beyond that, we had enlarge limbs on Mira to make her run faster. Yes. If if I can do all of her limbs, I would do that, but definitely her legs. Okay. All right. I... I'm confused on why you didn't just do quicken, but... I don't have it prepared. Ah. Uh, yeah. So, that is going to... Essentially, her legs become very long and a bit wider, and you have double movement speed as you have a comically long stride, and you are now about nine and a half, ten feet tall with incredibly long legs. Okay. I, I, I guess I will zip my ass over there. As two Unless invisible people appear out of nowhere on the sidewalk, one of them grows incredibly long legs and starts running. 
<laughs> it's like a fucking SCP. Now let's see what Ozzy's doing. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. I would kill to see this animated. <laughs> Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh. I don't like that. He uh, focuses for a second. As he ducks, he stands back up. And now that the invisibility has worn off, he stares directly at you, Streeg. Oh, well, fuck. That's interesting. Didn't really take such a close look before. What? And, uh... He... is going to... fucking run. He guns it at full speed down into the street away from the alley where you shot at him. Are you guys going to chase him? Yeah, I'm going to yell out he's getting away. I got big legs. What else am I supposed to do? <laughs> I got big legs and little arms. <laughs> How far away are, are, is Mira? Mira's pretty far, but going to get there much quicker than Rowan or uh, Frey. Oh, yeah. uh, he <laughs> turns into the main street as you guys are, again, about 10, 15 feet behind him. Maybe a bit more. He does get a bit of a fucking jump on you as you're trying to, like, you know, where you've done your shots. He stares for a second, then guns it. Um... Once he gets onto the main street, he just screams, Help! Help! They already killed one guard! They're after me, too! Help me! And he is running towards the nearest Ducal guardsman. I grab oh. Garrett and yank him in the opposite direction. And yell at the guardsman that that's... Ozzy. He has them in his pocket! He, they don't care! Go! Fine. So we go the other way, I guess. All right. Uh, Streak pulls you back towards the alley. As you guys lose sight of Ozzy. We lost him. Maybe you did. Mira will look down at the crowd to find. <laughs> All right. So you... um. You, Mira, you are continuing to head in the direction that was described as best as possible by Frey. Yeah. He's got the... All right. Uh, what about uh, Frey and Rowan? Are you guys also just heading, like, running towards where this is all happening? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Frey, Frey is running... Um, but I think whenever he gets the word from Garrett that Streeg is pulling him back, he would definitely pause, uncertain of what's happening now. He's going to the guards. He's he's telling the guards that we're trying to kill him and that we already killed another guard. Which we didn't, cool. he did, and we have an eyewitness account of it. Okay, so where where should we go? What what should we do? Uh, best bet at this point is attempt to re, um, reestablish ourselves back at, um, via court, uh, states. I mean, someone's gonna have to physically stop me, because I'm still running. Uh, like, even if you tell me not to, I'm still running. So. Well, if Rohan has been running this entire time, he's already way ahead of Frey. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Mira is also really ahead of Frey, so Frey is not going to be able to pass the message on to either of them. Mira, as you are heading down a main street, uh, a couple of Ducal guardsmen and a Bright flag you down 
the bright just kind of uh woman like you can see like she's got a cloak and she like pulls it down just to get like a better look up at you and she's just like hi what in the fuck is coming on here how, how about we bring it down a notch come on i'm chasing a murderer oh God. please get sit down are you just still running Please just step over them. I mean, Mira would be very torn because she likes to be lawful and do what authorities say. But I think in this case, um, no way. <laughs> I mean, the guy already killed a guard today, so fuck that guy. I, I gotta get the guy. All right, so you're just ignoring and keeping going. I'm I'm not ignoring them. I'm saying I'll be right back. I promise. And I'm. <laughs> this okay. would, I, I gotta say, in this moment, I really wish Mira had taken the jump thing because this would be the funniest moment to use it. Jump fucking fifty <laughs> feet into the air and just cartwheel Absolutely. over. Absolutely. Like. Sorry! Just like as you leap over them in a single bound. <laughs> <sighs> Alright. Well, thankfully. You know? Running from Brights so is surprisingly sorry, difficult. Sorry, be right back! <laughs> sorry, be right back! I don't want him to hurt anyone else. Something like that. Ron, you have, you're level four. Okay. Yeah. Um. Are she, we all uh, level four? You are all level four. I just it was important for the sake of the spell that the bright is now casting on you that I needed to know what level the effect was. Okay. It's like a dispel magic. And Mira, as you are running, uh, you hear a echoing cry of just this strange sound. It is obviously magical in nature, and you kind of, like, turn back over your shoulder to instinctively see, and you can see the bright holding up her right hand in a fist, and as she opens it, you just see this silvery blue light appear, and then the light also appears directly underneath you. She brings her hand into a fist again, the light glows, and then shudders, and as it does, your legs are normal. And the guards are still Doesn't she have resistance to magic attacks? Yeah. Hold on. Um, hold hold the heck on. That's such a cool use of this spell. I wanted it to be to work. Wouldn't it be we fucking try. awesome to enlarge limbs and catch a murderer? Um Hold on. <laughs> Holding on. I'm looking. Okay. You guys broke the cardinal rule of Artavishta. You made waves. You fucked with the natural societal order. We didn't do shit. Ozzy is fucking killing people over yeah, here. Yeah, but he did it in That's an alleyway and didn't disrupt the flow of the world. I will not accept accept responsibility for anything that's happening here. This is on him. I, I mean, I guess you're responsible for the giant legs. I guess if it's not a saving throw, I can't do anything about it. It is not. Do I go flying? You just kind of like as you're running like mid stride, you like your legs start to shrink, and you just have one like it feels like you just made a huge jump as you land, and there are Ducal guards from further down that are beginning to swarm towards you. Uh... Well... The Bright is also behind you and running in your direction as well. What are you doing? I weigh in the cost benefit of the 
this situation. Um... If anyone's gonna catch him, it's probably gonna be me, so... If I go to jail, you guys better get me out. Fuck. Oh, absolutely. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going to honestly, catch the man! The bad man! Honestly, this is beautiful. Mira has made Rohan better, but Rohan has definitely made Mira worse. Hey, he killed a guy. He's a bad man. He killed multiple guys. <laughs> yeah, see, sometimes rules have to be broken. That's what I'm saying. All right. So you are continuing to chase. Uh, let me double check the grapple rules as these fuckers are going to start tackling you. Fucking try me, bitch. Gira is strong. All right. <laughs> Mira proceeds to throw <laughs> one guard into the other repeatedly as she. <laughs> Roddy's got I, it. Right I, 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 I gently shake them off. <laughs> no, you just keep running with them on you. Oh. Mira got like a month out of a jail cell. It's fine. I'll just read books and be sad. All right. Do call guardsmen. Attempting to grapple. Um. All right. Mira, I need a strength punch or strength exert. Wow! This dude's earning his coin today! Oh, damn. Uh, okay. I thought that was uh, Mira. Fuck. Well, I don't want to hurt him, so I'll do <laughs> exert, I guess. This is... Um... I mean, they're essentially, like, running to, like, straight up, like, tackle you at this point. Okay. Okay, fine. Wow. You were so ready for that, Alex. I'm so sorry. Ugh. As you charge forward, one of the guards starts to, like, cut you off, and you're, like, bracing to tackle past him, and another one comes on the side and just grabs on and just lands grabbing your legs, and they just get tied together, and you start to fall, and then the one in front comes, and at this point, a second one, and then a third. The first one's standing up, and then drawing a sword. Okay, all right, right, I'm cooperating. I'm sorry. We're just sticking over. The bright. Have I showed up yet? Ah, uh, double speed. It's been a few minutes. Nope, not yet. All right. Remember, this was all happening while she was running. Like, she never stopped. Yeah. And, uh, the bright at this point. What exactly are you doing? I am trying to catch a murderer, ma'am. Give me a Charisma Convince. Plus two, because Mira's really nice and sweet. I'm pretty sure that's what the plus one's already for there. Damn. Um, at this point, one of the guards has put shackles on your hands. Okay. And the... Right, she just kind of. Of course you are. Of course you are. Why don't? Why don't we go sit down? And she's going to guide you to a nearby bench. Okay. Now, what exactly happened? Who did that to you? Friend of mine. We've been. Trying to get after this man since, um, fuck, what was the name of the... Fontaimon. Fontaimon. That. That thing that I can't pronounce. She kind of gives a nod She, and... like, quick, quickly, like, explains, you know, this guy murdered a bunch of people in Fontaimon, or however it's pronounced, stole, stole my friend's face, and we've been after him, and we're really close to catching him. And empowered by the regional governor to track him down and hunt him. 
and that <laughs> empowered by the re she kind of like gives this nod and the look she is giving you is one that you are probably escaped from like a mental asylum but how did I have magic cast on me if I came from a mental asylum what, what about that are you, are you arguing with my description of uh, of uh no of a no <laughs> I think I will say, based on the kind of person the Rohan is, probably the 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 population of of apt people in mental asylums is pretty high. <laughs> oh, so after a moment, she listens to your she listens to like your description and then just like, all right, why don't we relax for a moment? Uh, you scared a lot of people screaming about murder and death and, oh, that enchantment going on with you? You said you had a friend that did that. Yes, he's probably on the way, too. At this, she, like, nods and the Ducal Guardsmen begin to draw their weapons oh, again and start shit. heading in that direction. <laughs> and what is your friend's name? What does, what do they look like? Um. The advice of counsel, I've chosen to use my Fifth Amendment right to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have that. Say the bed. Oh fuck! What's what's Garrett's wife's name? Vivian Viacourt. I I need to. Talk to Mrs. Viacourt, please. <laughs> I need to talk to my lawyer. <laughs> Lady. Also, my lawyer's one of the richest people in the city. Lady Viacourt. Lady Viacourt, not Mrs. <laughs> that's right, that's more. It is so funny to, like, be arrested. And she be knows like, me. Please, I need to speak to Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's basically about it. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Please, please, I know Bill Gates. He's going to get me out of this. I just need to talk to him. I've been staying at his place. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Let me talk to the Duchess. Oh, <laughs> I was at a party with her just the other night. This is not helping the the vibe that we've all <laughs> gone crazy. It doesn't know any better. I, I do not want your friend to get hurt by these guards when he, she, whoever they are, comes running. Please. Well, how many running people are there going to be in this city? She gives a nod, motions to the guards, gives them a nod, and you see them head towards the side walkways away from the main street. <sighs> she then turns back to you. So where are you from, miss? My name is Mira Tyrell. I'm from Corval. Oh, okay. And how did you get here to Artavishta, Mira? It's a long story. That's okay, we'll have time. We don't want you hurting anyone. We don't want any murders to happen. I don't we'll want get you to home. hurt anyone. Good, good, we'll get you home. We'll get you back to Corval, okay? I haven't lived there in many years. Oh, of course. Of course, so where did you come from? Why were you... Why were you looking for this murderer, Miss Tyrell? I'm trying to scroll out on the map, but it's not where- <laughs> Where do we fucking come from? I traveled with my friends from Fortuny Soul. Okay, and why are you here? Because one of my friends is married to Lady Viacourt, and we came to see her. She just gives a nod again, and... 
It is around this time. Lady Vicourt? Lady Vicourt. Yeah, that's fine. He said, well, he said, she said Garrett. Oh. Specifically. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, Rowan, you are running with everything you've got. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you do see, like, as you're kind of coming around a slow bend in it, you can see where Mira is sitting next to a bright on a bench at the side. Mira looks the, uh, very frustrated. And she's in shackles? Yes. Okay. I slow down then, because... If Mira's not catching them, then we're, I'm not, right. so... And at this point, you see a few Ducal guardsmen emerging from the... Uh, from the walkways nearby. Weapons not drawn, but, like, a couple of them have hands on swords as they approach you. You're going to have to come with us. Uh, you're wanted by a bright suspicion of a murder? Or perhaps a murder? I'm suspected of a murder. Can I speak to my friend Mira and the bright who's talking to her, please? I'll cooperate. Just, Are you apt? Can we go speak to them together? Yes, I am. Please do not speak again, sir. And then they hand you shackles to put on. Put them on. You put them on, they bring you over, and uh, as you are sat down one bench away, the bright uh, kind of like looks to you, Mira. Is, is that your friend, Miss Tyrell? Yes. All right. She looks over and nods to one of the Ducal guardsmen. This nice gentleman here is going to keep you company while I go and speak with your friend, all right? You don't have to talk to me like that. It's very rude. I'm sorry, I just... Someone comes running, there's magic, there's murder. It is scary for all of us. No one wants to hear about that. And uh, one of the guardsmen at this point is standing pretty much over you, nervously. And she heads Well, I'm over. not going to do anything. And she uh, heads over to Rowan. Oh, um, you know this woman. Am, am I allowed to speak now? I was told not to. She focuses on you for a second. You're apt? Yes. She just kind of looks back to Mira and then back to you. You may speak. Yes, this is my friend Mira. I'm Rohan. Um, we are pursuing... Osmond McBrownen. He is a murderer. Uh, also apt. Um, if you reach into my pack, you will see a uh, letter that we have from the uh, regent elect um, who we met in Puentemen, who authorized us to pursue Ozzy, Osmond, um, because he used my face he disguised himself as me and then murdered several law enforcement officers and then made off to Artavishta to kill somebody else um there's also a, a guard who is visiting here with us William Abney who will vouch for the fact that um I've been sent here by the regent elect um to do this that we all have um we just saw osman murder a guard who i believe is was working with him and so 
we were trying to chase him down before we lost the best lead that we've had in, you know, the weeks that we've been after him. And so that's why I cast a spell on my friend Mira to allow her to catch up with him. But obviously that didn't work. So, you know, that's fine that he's gotten away, but we met well. We clearly are not trying to hurt anybody. We've been tasked with bringing him in, and that's why we're here. Give me a charisma convince. And you two know Lady Viacourt. Yes, we've been traveling with our friend Garrett Viacourt, um, the husband of Vivian Viacourt. Um, we are staying at her residence. She's well acquainted with us. We are actually helping her uh, find out what happened in the uh, attack, the explosion that happened and recently. What was the name of this gentleman who was assigned to you by the Regent Elect, was it? Uh, yes, William Abney. Um, we did. We met him after that city, I believe. But yes, he his orders are. But to, he is a to call guardsman. Yes. All correct. right. She turns to one of the guards. Fetch this Abney. We'll sort our story straight at that point. And she uh, turns back. Um, I am happy to, you know be here as long as you are verifying all of this stuff but I would recommend you also send somebody to find Osmond McBrown and we can give you his description um, you have us in custody obviously we're not going anywhere but he will get away and he has murdered at least one guard today so for your own sake for your own safety for the safety of your colleagues I might recommend she motions to uh, another one of the Ducal guards who heads over to listen to you give a description while she heads back to Mira, while you guys go over that, Frey, are you just heading back in that general direction, or like um, towards where uh, they ran off to? I I think uh, Frey was going to originally go and uh, uh, head toward the Viacourt Manor, but. Uh, seeing that Rohan and Mir had just kind of kept going, he's definitely a little, a little lost, kind of, you know, looking or trying to figure out where they have gone at this point. Like, is there any, like, commotion going through the crowds from, you know, what just went down? A little bit. Like, you'd have to, like, they've been running. I assume Frey was not running. No, so. he was not. Yeah, I mean, he can probably follow the crowds and listen to what's happening and figure out where it happened, but... It's still gonna take him a little while with a, at a walk. Yeah, like it'll be a power walk. Okay, all right. Which brings us back to Garrett and Streak. You are panicking in an alleyway as McBrennan is has uh you've lost sight of him. The last you heard, he was running towards the guard, calling about murder. Well, I guess I we mean, need to get I'm out of here. I'm running back down that alleyway. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting us lost and making us disappear. All right. Are you heading back to where he his residence was, or no? Like no. Okay. All right. Oh, given that you do not know yet that anyone is looking for you. Or at all, for you two, at least. It is not hard to disappear back into the crowd in the other direction. We should probably try to... Now that we've kind of lost a bit, we should probably try to head back the other way to meet up with uh, Frey and everyone. Or do you think we should just go right back to the, uh, the estate? You're the plan guy. Hey, you can always consult um, Frey. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna reach out to Frey. Just be like, hey. So I think we didn't get um, spotted by the guard. So he's just kind of yeah. Os Osmond got away. But um, do do you have eyes on on Mira and and Rohan? No, they they just kept 
running. I I don't know where they are now. All right, we're we're gonna head back towards you and see if we can find them. Um, he is gonna try to implicate you in this, but that's okay. We've got William, or uh, in in the death of the guard, but that's okay. We've got William, and we can get uh, ahead on on that. Um, and since we have William to vouch for us, and we have the letter explaining that he's done this, and we have uh, both the word of my wife and the Duchess that were not criminals. Um, we should be able to, uh, you know, handle that relatively easily. Plus, we have uh, a, we have a witness of him killing uh, that guard, a description of the guard and a description of the other guard that he was uh, working with, who was following you and taking notes. All right. So we should be able to uh, ha- handle our guilt quote unquote in this pretty pretty easily and see if we can get into or at least find if we can find this guard maybe we can get that guard to talk uh about what they know about him we'll still have to try to find him somewhere but um we lost him for now all right so for the sake of narrative brevity over the course of the next hour hour and a half you all are able to meet back up. Um, they are able to confirm, and essentially, William Abney is able to confirm your story, meeting with uh, some of the Ducal guards. Um, and from the nearby bastion in the commons, you guys are all essentially, uh, at least Mira and Rowan, uh, was anyone else heading to the bastion to meet up with them, or would the other three of you met back up separately? Did they get taken to the Bastion? I thought they were still at the seat. They will have been brought back to the Bastion after that to go over everything with uh, Abney. Would Frey have seen them get taken to the Bastion? Yeah, it's got to be a little while, so he will have eventually ran into them if he kept okay. heading in that direction. Yeah, no, we'll meet him at the Bastion because we got to tell him, hey, this is the guard who was killed. He's at this location. Uh, Osmond's trying to blame it on Frey, and then this is the other guard that we saw. Here's his description. Also, okay. William, did you find out anything about uh, Amos? So, after probably an hour and a half, some time at the Bastion, they go over everything. Um, William just kind of, oh. So, I was, that's the right mess, loves, but uh, we're all on it now. So we're going to all of this. We got some some good news and some bad news. Okay. Which bad would you like first? first? Bad I'm news. thinking bad news. Bad news. That uh, gentleman you're looking for, uh, Amos uh, Bennett, mm-hmm. was um, at his request reassigned uh, out to a uh, Corval. Little town never even heard of it. Had to do some research and even where it was. Okay. What was the where, town? Where is it? <laughs> uh, the top Corval. Oh, oh. That's not what I heard at all. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, out there in the Corval, way out in the, and he kind of like gives a description and uh, yeah. Okay, so that's not too far away, but it is a bit of a trip to get there. the valley, pretty much. Never even heard of it. where I'm from. Hmm. Was it, wait, Was that Mira who said that? (laughs) Yes. Didn't the Bray also mention that as in, like, that insane asylum? No. No, that was a different name? It began with a C. Oh, yeah, 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 um, well, Mira mentioned she was from there. Oh, the insane okay. asylum was not a literal thing. That was just me doing a description of how she was treating Mira. Oh, okie dokes. Okay, yeah. my mistake. Uh, Frey would look at Mira. How long has it been? I mean, besides the obvious. 
13 years? I think. 13 years, Oops. including the 11? Uh huh. I mean, it's not like there's really anything there for me anymore. Well, you never know. A bit of an opportunity for a homecoming. She kind of, like, grimaces a little. I mean, of course, there's no obligation for you to go if it's... No, I would go. It's just... I mean, literally, there's nothing there for me to even look at anymore. My father's house burned down. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, William, what was the good news? Um, well, uh... Well, after that, um... I spoke with a couple of captains at the Bastions, um... I'm under the command of whoever's got the writ from the region. Okay. Till uh, further yeah. notice. Great. They didn't That's mention us. specifically whoever has it. Obviously, um, you know, it doesn't matter, but, you know, just to be specific. Okay. Yes, yes I'm under your command. Generally. Okay. Um, okay, that's... I mean, I'm... It was a lifesaver to have you here, so... Thank God. Um, oh, yes. Uh, certainly is a lot of love. Uh, <laughs> now I'm just worried about where we uh, where we go from here. It's, uh, yeah, we'll get it's into gonna be on high alert now. What happened then? Apparently, he already got his uh, his revenge on that uh, Blakely woman. Yeah. Couldn't find anything on her. Don't know what uh, how she'd been here, what she'd been doing, but it seems like uh, got what he needed. You found her body? No, just based on what you all told me. Uh. Yeah. It sounds like he killed her and took over her operation like she was uh she had the guards in her pocket and now he's in charge of them um whichever guards are corrupt so it's uh, certainly concerning too uh i'm i'm not i'm not uh so we got that and uh, uh the brights are uh the most are going to be a lifetime appointment so they're probably trustworthy um, That's true. Don't know about everyone else, so might want to keep this knowledge on the uh, hush hush. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I, I looked into it. He uh, apparently he told uh, well the captains he uh, he needed a new change of pace. Wanted out. Wanted something outside of Artavishte. He spent years. Had a part of a decade working his way into respect here, but all the way to the palace. Trust in God to uh I mean they thought it was for, you know, a girl or something, but He just shrugs at that point. What were you looking for him about anyway? look over at Garrett like he was involved with the um interviews during the uh, explosion at um at, at the oh, uh, no. the estate yeah no. and yeah 
So he was involved with the interviews, and uh, everything that we were seeing was basically top top the line investigations, except for those interviews. So we think he either may know something or may be involved with individuals who may know something in, in with regards to the uh, the explosion. And whether that's something that he's doing under duress and attempting to hide or or he's actively involved with it, we don't know yet. But he's got something to do with it. He just kind of shakes his head. So, what now? I mean, how do you even know who's... He kind of, like, leans in close. Like, he almost seems scared to say it as he kind of, like, utters under his breath, Dirty. At this point. We don't. How do we find out? I mean... So, we have the description of that guard who is following Bray. If we could find out who that is, maybe we can pressure them to to give us some more information about who else is dirty. And additionally, we also have that guard who was killed by uh, Osman. Uh, were they able to recover him yet? Uh, from what I've heard, uh... He, uh, disappeared. They went where, where you said there was, uh, no body. Damn it. What, uh, what, what did he say his name was? Freak, you heard him yell at him? Don't remember a name. He just, the guard, he wanted the guard to do something the guard didn't want okay. to, I guess. And then the guard seemed like he kind of agreed, and it was like Ozzy was going to pay him, but instead he tricked him and killed him. There was no evidence. There was no blood, nothing. That's a damned professional. Every sense. I would bet he's left some traces there. Yeah, Bray might be able to pick up on on something he's good at. Um, he's he's good at that. He can uh, pick up on on a kind of I, I don't know the best way to describe it. You probably know better, Frey, but there's certain uh, echoes of the past. Ray frowns. I, it's 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 a lot. I, uh, but but yes, there's a particularly strong emotional imprint, such as one left at the moment of a person's death. It leaves something behind that I can pick up on sometimes. Let's let's go back. Maybe maybe talking about this less so. He kind of like looks around, almost paranoid. Less prying ears is a good idea too. I I agree actually. Ah uh, well, if well if you don't have your the other guards crawling all over it still, I imagine it might be for a while yet, but. Uh, uh, Strieg, Rohan, if you could show me where that place was that he was holed up. Yeah. Alright, not Rohan, Garrett. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, we can certainly do that. Alright. So, you guys head back in that direction. 
get back to the alley. As you do, there's just that thought that he was right fucking there. He was right fucking there, and he had cooked the damn situation. He was never in any danger. At least he doesn't seem to think he was, but... There is one Ducal guardsman that is posted outside of the door to the, in the alley. Is it one of the ones they saw earlier? It is not. Okay. Um, Abney just kind of, I'll, um, I'll go tell him to, I'll take over. Thank you, William. And he heads over and they laugh about something. He pats the other, uh, the other guard on the back and the guard heads on, uh, seems like he's pulling out something to eat from his pouch as he's walking away. And, uh, Abney then just, like, motions. All right. Uh, seems like they, uh, they searched for about an hour. They found nothing. No blood, no evidence of anything. It's just a abandoned house. That's not really what we're looking for now, is it, love? No, no. I, uh... I very much think there's something here that, uh, that they can't see. And he'll look over at, uh, Strieg and, and Garrett, uh, as they step inside, and where did it happen? So we could see in from the window over there, and I point out the window, we could see this room. Um, I didn't see him kill the man, but, uh, the guard, but Strieg did. Uh, where did he do that? Killed him at the table, dragged the body into the back room. Ray gives a nod, and he will go over to the table, hesitating a moment before he uh, brushes his fingertips over it. And then smoothing down to his palms, and I'm gonna use my emotional resonance and see if I pick up anything. Alright, let's see what Frey can pick up at a glance. Uh, yeah, is... just surface level right now. It is this overwhelming guilt. A father who has failed his family. Hmm. Frey uh, will... Frey will push deeper into that. You know what to do. Yep. Wisdom magic. Nine. Get one question. Okay. My question is... Where are you now? This is to the... about who it's associated with a scene relating to the emotion or object some other piece of okay so the the emotion you are asking where are you now all right uh yes basically like wherever that guilt is coming from or whoever that guilt is coming from dead that guilt is gone. That person is dead and gone. It was their last 
not just the strongest emotion, their last emotion and thoughts that you were feeling. This horrible guilt, this failure as a father that pivoted immediately to death. There was nothing else. Okay. And, and my quest, my question can't like give me any clue on like where the body is. Uh unfortunately not. Okay. Okay. That is okay. Ray. Ray shudders, thinking down into a chair as he pulls his hands back. I, 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 I'm sorry. I don't know where, what, 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 what happened to them or their body afterwards. But there was guilt, regret. I'm sorry, nothing we don't already know. He died here. Well, thank you for looking, uh, or that I know that sometimes it, well, not even sometimes, I know it's uncomfortable for you to touch those emotions. To... But we know that for sure that the person was killed here. Obviously not that we didn't trust Strieg, but sometimes just having that extra verification. So what did he do with the body? What did, how did he disguise it? Um, we should have brought Mira or Rohan to see if they could see I mean, they're here. I assumed everyone oh. came. Yeah. I don't see why not. Were there any kind of uh, magics disguising? Because uh, he, he, you said he's an illusionist, right, Rohan? Mm-hmm. So could any illusion magics have been used to hide uh, a, a body here? I mean, I'll look around to see if I see any illusions, but I I can't think of anything that would do that, I guess, but... You see nothing that, uh... Nothing invisible, nothing illusory. Everything is as it seems to be. Okay. Oh. Based on Shriek's recollection when you guys went over this, and it seems like... The guard that was left here got rid of the body. Somehow. And before that, a perfect job was done making sure that there was no evidence of a murder. Oh, um, before I forget, he could see us, but he couldn't see us. He could see that... <sighs> that there was humanoid shapes, but he couldn't actually see us, see us, if that makes sense while we were invisible. I kind of like gush here okay. between Garrett and I. He was looking here-ish. So does that mean that maybe he couldn't see, maybe he just sensed I, you were there somehow? I feel like it'd be like, if we threw uh, a sheet over someone, you could see them, that there's a person there, 
but you couldn't tell who it is or actually see them. Yeah, I'm. I mean, my first guess is maybe he could see, like, what Mira can do. Like, maybe he could see the the magical aura coming off of you from the invisibility. Um, yes, that's a good way to put it. That that sounds like it. Robert, would I have any other ideas of like? Because I can't remember off the top of my head like what illusionist abilities there are, but can, do I have any idea what what else it could be that he might have been able to see? Them, um, but not like. Do so, give me a int magic. Yay! So with the ability to see the arcane. Like, there are abilities where you literally can just see enchantments, energies, magics, but not see past them. The same way that, like, a more powerful version, like... Rowan can see that something is an illusion. Yeah. But he can't see past the illusion. He just knows that it's not real. Yeah. Yeah. It could be the same sort of thing, where he saw that there was something in front of him that was giving off invisible energies. Knew it was watching him, but he couldn't actually see past it. Yeah, I guess one other question is, it so, like, both of them shot at him, and they both... Specifically, he dodged both of them, it seems like. Do I know, like, I guess mechanically maybe like do i have any sense if that was like his like they didn't hit his ac or if there was some kind of magical ability that he was using to like based on the description of what was said it seems like mechanically they just didn't hit his ac okay damn all right it was high ac yeah it wasn't until after we shot at him that he really looked at it and seemed to see something inside of Streak. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I don't know about that. Forgot about that. Streak, are you missing any spell slots you didn't know about? Ah, <laughs> oh, shit, I forgot to check. Hold on. <laughs> um, does... Maybe it was the... Do we remember what he said when he looked at Streak? Something about like, huh, didn't know this that about you. Wasn't before. expecting that or something like that, he said. Yeah. This is interesting. Basically. Uh, but then My he proceeded to run. Like, before yeah. that, he was ready to throw down. My you guess know, is he might have just not. Thing from the dragon cave, whatever. Maybe he just didn't really expect us to be chasing him. Maybe, yeah. I guess that could be that too. But I mean, oh, like, I mean, I never it had seemed any like he was ready to fight guy. until that. Did he see the darkness inside? Right, that's what I'm thinking. Because it's, yeah, it sounds like he was ready to fight before that. So. And I mean, he dodged your arrows pretty easily so there's a I, I don't know I, I guess like there is a question of if we find him again what is it we can do to to actually you know take him down apparently I'm still having the problem with actually hitting my shots <laughs> well I mean in this one even streakness which is you know I think that was just more about Ozzy than about you still like hurts a, a little bit is there like know. a fly stuck to the wall behind him? Like, <laughs> was that was that what Streak was aiming at accidentally? The the fly. The guard's body is gone, but there is a civilian out there who is dead. Right, with Perfectly the crossbow shot. bolt, like yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think probably it's gonna come down to Mira like tackling this guy and holding him in place because you know he's a he's a mage i don't think his thing is going to be hand-to-hand combat so i guess we'll see 
if and when that happens. Did you just say you don't think his thing is going to be hand-to-hand -hand combat? Yeah. After he effortlessly stabbed a man in the throat and took on, like, six guards at once? Yeah. Well, when did, you, wait, where... when did you take on the six guards? I don't remember. Oh, well, those were guys were asleep. That doesn't count. He knocked those guys out. And the effort will see that that guy wasn't fighting back. Like, it's very, di like. I, I know can, what you mean, yeah. Assassination's a lot easier than, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can be good at stabbing someone and still not take a punch. Especially from Mira. So. That, that is very true. What are you guys doing? This was kind of a dead end, and... Was it? I feel um, like you guys got fucked off information. You know what? Actually, this is a really good time to take a quick break while we figure out where things go from here. Amazing. And we are back after your investigation bears little fruit at this stage, but seeing that apparently at least a number of Ducal guards are in the pocket of Osma McBrennan and whatever he has going on, what is it you guys are going to do? It's the plan, Sky. That is a good question. Well, I think we should... I think w there's a couple things we can do. One, I don't know how quickly this information's traveled through the Ducal Guard that we weren't responsible for the other guard's death, so we could see if that first, uh, the second guard tries to make a report about that. Um, Two, at the very least, we have that description of the second guard, so we can circulate that and see if we can find them. That would probably be our best bet to get a hold of um, Osman, or at least see if we can find anyone else who's, for lack of a better word, uh, dirty. Yeah. Those are smart. So we can either wait and see till they try to put in that Frey killed someone because that's what he said was going to do. Or we could, you know, if we don't think that's an option, we could go right to the uh, the officer. I don't know which, which you guys think is the better of the two choices. I think maybe we could give Justin Bright um, the description of the officer, uh, of the Ducal Guard, um, because... We're pretty sure the Bright is not not in cahoots with Ozzy. Um, and also, like, have her be on the lookout for if this guy tries to come put in a report. I think so. That, that would be a good option. Uh, I don't think the Brights would be in on it, but... And it would be less likely to, to spread that we know this other guard is, you know, not in, not yeah. uh, strictly legal. Yep. All in favor? Hi. Yeah, that sounds good. Great. Are are the brights also at the the bastion or? Uh, no. Is the brights like sometimes they head to the bastion, but they are like they do report to the Lucian Ray. Okay. Like. 
they work with the uh, with the Ducal Guards sometimes, but they are officially a separate thing. The only time they really intermingle is at the palace, when there are sometimes brights there, like full time brights. <laughs> okay. Um, do we want to head back to Garrett's place and see if? Mira stuff got dropped off because then we might want to go to the Lucian Ray anyway. Um, based on what that what information that returns, and then while we're at the Lucian Ray, we can tell the Brights. Sure, yeah, cool. Let's go to Garrett's place. All right, yeah, back to the Via Cora State. You all go. Yeah, pill Viv uh, in on what happened. Yeah. Um. Is there anything that you guys want uh, need Abney to do right now or no? Maybe we have him bring the information for that to the bright. Yeah. Try to keep us a little bit more out of it. Yeah. Probably Certainly not against that. Yeah. Well, he is under orders to be under your orders, so... Yeah. You guys have at least one guard you can trust. Yeah. Well, that makes me think we shouldn't trust him, but... I will err on the side of believing him. Um, did anything get dropped off at the Via Court Estate? Um, so when you guys do arrive back, um, there is a note written out. It doesn't look like anything was dropped off. This is regarding the information from the, uh, that, uh, Professor Willis had, right? Or was yeah. getting for you? Yes. Um, so they didn't drop anything off, but it looks like they did have a missive written. It looks like it was hastily written, like they were planning on delivering you the information, but when you weren't there, they wrote it down. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially just gave it to, you know, Viv was busy, so just while the guards. Yeah. Um, He was employed, he did work at the Lucian Ray for a number of years. Um, What he worked on is apparently classified information essentially like they were unable to find out what he exactly worked on uh just that he was not a teacher like whatever he was doing it was private work within the lucian ray um and he left it looks like about it was around 1610 he left, about 40 years ago. Yeah, about 46 years ago. Okay, that's a lot. That's, um... Does Mira share this information with us? Uh, yeah, of course. Do we know what the, like, what the hierarchy of the Lucian Ray is? Like, the power structure? Who's in charge? Um, so technically speaking, like, there's... There's the public-facing school, and then there's also, like, the research and things that they do, which is a lot more obfuscated and not really public knowledge without really investigating it. But regarding, like, the school and everything, it is generally, like... The headmaster uh, who runs the school side of things and kind of gets final say on everything. Uh, then kind of the scholars board who determines a lot of like special admissions cases and things like that. But after that, like there are just different areas such as the scholars board. Uh, I don't think you guys have really investigated, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But um, generally speaking, uh, if you're asking about like who commands the brights... 
if I that's more the way. way you were going. Um, there is like a separate section of the Lucian Ray that is specifically like handled by the Brights. Um, they do have a command structure of their own. Okay. It's not like readily like available knowledge, but it is known that like they do have you know captains and things like that. Okay, and would we know like the research division is that? Would that fall under the school stuff or the bright stuff? Um, based on the fact that they that uh the assistant from uh, Willis's assistant who looked into it couldn't find any information, it doesn't. It seems like whatever it was, it was very private and not really school related. Okay. Because like essentially like that's their goal, right? They teach people, and the ones who like can't afford it otherwise. Like, they're going to be working with the Lucian Ray full time. If it turns out, hey, they can't, they're not threatening, they can't swing a sword, they're not really good at combat magic or anything like that, they're gonna find something else for them to do, and it's probably not gonna be public facing. Yeah. But apparently, yeah, he was like, like, he was apparently, like, the, the details I have here, he was known to be uh, well respected insanely smart uh left for pretty much no reason in 1610 at least from what the notes say um and they couldn't really figure out what he actually did but um he uh he was a let's see here okay so like i have his notes and fucking i'm not sure what i wanted to be public and why i didn't otherwise let me see So it looks like he was an exemplary student, and he specifically studied, um, like, living transmutation was, like, his specialty. Hmm. Um, I feel like we know the best... Somebody description would be things like um like um altered like altered beasts that sort of thing would be would also fall under that category kind of of living transmutation where it's a living thing that has been altered by mana uh apparently yeah like his big like final thing was um he was able to um it is the last thing that's like i'm gonna air quotes this public record was that he was able to remove the mana from a... Let's see here, what... Would they have... Oh, no, never mind. Okay. Uh, scratch that. He was able to remove mana from something very powerful, some sort of altered beast without killing. It did die a few days later. But apparently it was a huge fucking deal at the time, and it's something that isn't really even replicated now because they haven't been able to, like, they haven't been able to improve on that at all. Probably should I'm trying to think of, like, what is the metaphor? Like, I'm trying to understand what, what the, like, like, what that's like. Like, to remove the mana from an altered being without killing it like is this like extracting a thing's heart without killing it no it would be like um it would be like imagine like if rowan's ability to do magic was like another organ and it was just taken out hmm. okay. like that interesting okay um well yeah, I guess Mira is, uh, were you hoping for, I would imagine you were hoping for more information than this, or? My microphone wasn't unmuting. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm not really sure what I was hoping for. I mean, makes sense, at least. 
And I think yeah. when he left was around the time when his daughter died. Mm. His real daughter. I mean, it don't know if we like... can go ahead. I was going to say, it sounds like there might be more information to be had if we could talk to somebody who had more access, but, you know, I don't know who that is or why they would help us necessarily, so. Maybe someone mm -hmm. who worked with him. <laughs> yeah. I whisper over the earring. Oh yeah, is Frey still wearing the earring? Um, no, he would have given it back to, I guess, for a while. Okay, cool. Well, no, that... Someone like that would have to be very old themselves now, too. Yeah. That is was a man, right? What's that you were cutting out? Uh, Thaddeus was an old man, right? Uh, Thaddeus was, like, uh, maybe 60s. Hmm. He might be worth asking, at least. I, we, we do have an in with Thaddeus. We still have that, that uh, notebook, I believe. We need to give back to him. Maybe he could point us to some of the older members he knows of. Yeah. We also should figure out what we're going to do with this lantern, for what it's worth. Are we handing that over to him as, as well? Do you think it would stay with someone else? I have no idea. I don't know why it's staying with us, to be honest, but... Only one way to find out. Well, do we want to go see if he's around? Doesn't seem like there's much else to do at the moment. Yeah. Okay, cool. I guess we can group field trip to the Lucian Ray. Field trip, group field trip. Mm -hmm. Alright. Everyone's heading to the Lucian Ray then. Sure, mm -hmm. why not? Alright. You head back, it is as it always is. I mean, at this point, it's late afternoon, probably four or five o'clock. Maybe even a little bit later. Like, we're getting towards sunset. The chill is coming back with a vengeance. And you get there, and it is not quite bustling, but it is the most active that you've seen it so far. There are people moving around. The fountain is currently, you can see there are two fish, and they each kind of are entwined, and they emerge out opposite sides, opening very large mouths. And from them emerge these small swordsmen who jump onto the top of the fountain and then begin fighting each other, fencing. Cool. Eventually they both trip, fall, and disappear into nothingness, and more enchantments continue. Hmm. You guys make your way in. Um, are you heading directly to his office, or...? Yeah, I think so, if we can find it. I assume it's near the Scholar's Board office or whatever. Um, his office is, yeah, it is near the, uh, the Scholar's Board, um, the Scholar's Board meeting room. Uh, though it is not one of the main, uh, the main offices here. 
Um, as you are walking, you do see, like, you're heading down the hallway. Um, there's a second hallway off of the office, like, it turns left, and it's down there. And you do see what looks like a very large, like, tannish golden duck in the middle of the hallway staring at you. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Is it in the place that we need to walk? Uh, yes. It is standing in the middle of the hallway. Uh, this is like the hallway where you met with, uh, where you met with, uh, Professor Bird and Professor Willis. Yeah. Um, Politely step around the duck. It, um, yeah. it is just staring and then you just hear, shh, 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 shh. And you see Professor Willis sticking his head out from someone else's, uh, one of the other lecture halls. Please, just one moment. <laughs> and he starts trying to sneak up behind it. Yeah, and he I like... Quack I, the duck. I pick up the duck. You're walking towards it to pick it up? He's like behind it, like trying to sneak up by it. You're gonna try and grab it? Yeah. Uh, no. I mean, I guess maybe we could just stand there and... Grab it if it runs away. Yeah, I think we probably wait for him to make his his uh, attempt. He uh, he sneaks up, and once he's about two feet away, the duck is still staring at you. He jumps to tackle it, and as he does, it vanishes into nothing. He just. Damn it! Um, he, he, at this point, he stands back up, and, like brushes himself off. You all haven't seen another another duck like that, have you? No, uh, that's that's a first. That is a first. A vanishing giant golden duck. If you do, how many ducks you, do you have? There's there's one. I I have a bet with Professor Bird. He said he can keep a duck in the offices here for a week. And we've got 50 silver on it. So. How many days left? This is day three. Three. I thought he fucked up. He shakes his head. If you see it, I will pay you ten gold, hundred silver. Um, so what is up with you and Professor Bird? It seems like you're always ending up in these bets. He's he's a very difficult man, an absolute menace at the best of times, but he's my friend. How often do you win? He's my friend. <laughs> Fair enough. He's very good at what he does. He's very good at a lot of things. Damn genius, honestly. But either way, just keep eyes peeled I will pay you he just like points and gives a thumbs up keep quiet okay give him a thumbs up back and um, he heads back yeah. into the lecture hall and you hear him uh, you hear him call out uh, sorry about the wait uh, we'll continue now I look over at Rohan. Since you've been here more often, is it always like that? I mean, that's the first time I've seen a duck. <laughs> they Fair. are all uh, real characters. 
Yeah. Definitely not as, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, I guess, but it wasn't really, this wasn't really the vibe that I was expecting. But, you no, know, I guess when you're, when you're brilliant and have tenure, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Yeah, sound, sounds about right. <laughs> Hello. Um, to Thaddeus, I guess. Uh, you head the rest of the way down uh, the winding corridor to Thaddeus's office. Emblazoned on the door in... A lovely, simple script is Professor Thaddeus Kion. Nice. Um, is the door closed? It is closed. I will knock. You knock and... A moment later, you hear... No, I'm not hiding your duck. Uh... Professor, it's, uh, it's, it's not. Oh, um, um, at this point, you hear him shuffling, and he comes running over, and, oh, I heard that you all had, uh, had made it. Yes. So then the, uh, surprise. So it's, uh, nice to see you again. Um, please, please, come in, come in. And he brings you in, and it's a very... Simple. It's not nearly as large as some of the others. I am um, probably my last year on the Scholars Board. Hmm. I uh, spoke with some of the other professors. Apparently, a uh, bird took an interest in you. Yes. Yeah, he did. Um, I, I ended up turning him down. Yes, that is. Uh, I will say, your chances of getting in normally are... And he pauses for a moment. It's tougher than it would have been with Bird. And he gives a bit of a shrug. If, uh, if you are not, then you are not. He is a I... difficult man to work with at the best of times. I mean, his, uh, his personality notwithstanding, I didn't really want to. Please do, do not. The, he was asking. Do not. Uh, it's better that I don't know. Yeah. I will say he does go through quite a lot of uh, understudies and pupils beyond the uh, extent of his lectures. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, well, uh, we were here for, I guess, a few reasons. Um, we, I guess first we wanted to ask you about, um, I, I like glance over at Mira. Um, Mira's father, this is my friend Mira, um, I don't remember if, I oh, think. the pleasure is all mine. Yes. <clears throat> Um, yeah, she is, uh, her, her father worked at the Lucian Ray a while back, and we thought perhaps you might, you might have known him, you might know something about him. We got a little bit of information from Professor Willis, but doesn't seem like he knew too much. I mean, he, like, looks over at her and then looks back at you. Kept me much older than me at most, right? Yeah, um... I, like, look over at Mira, like... To see how much she wants to say, because, I don't know. I'd be muted if you're talking. I was muted again. Do we still have the note with us? Uh, yeah, I think we would have brought it. 
I would say let's start with a name. Your father's name is. We, um. <clears throat> yes. Uh. His his name is Silas Tyrell. I'm Mira. He kind of thinks for a moment. And... Tyrell. Tyrell. I'm. Fortunately, I never really learned from a Tyrell. Well, he wasn't a teacher. Uh huh. And she will, like, sort of read out, kind of, just the bait, like, he was doing private work, apparently, uh, this is what he studied. Curious. Living Figured transmutation. That, yeah. It's interesting. <sighs> Not unlike a more complicated version of what I did with him. Um, and he kind of like just goes crestfallen for a moment. Mm. No, don't do this to me. <sighs> he shakes his head. I am. Um... <sighs> he he just kind of pauses again. I swear, we have so much information, yet finding any of it's impossible. So let me see what I am able to dig up. Give me one moment. Uh, I have some notes and things. On, uh... I've never taught anything about... And he just kind of, like, doesn't even finish the sentence, but he goes and he starts uh, going through some cabinets and just checking on some desk drawers and after about five minutes he uh oh. I am um... I didn't personally reference any of his work but uh with uh with Grey Mane a person I was working with did and uh well from what I gather, uh, man was a was a visionary. He shakes his head. That was before my time, though. Really, all of it. I see. Well, thank you, anyways. He gives a nod and. What are you looking for, exactly? Just any information about him. I... I didn't know him very well, and... Well, he met, he went missing about 13 years ago. And I've been looking for him. He kind of narrows his eyes, then shakes his head. I'm sorry about that, um... Check with, um... Check with my colleague who I worked with with the uh, the Grey Main project. Uh, she may know something. Uh, Professor Silver. Her uh, office is on the other wing, on the other side. She um she mostly works in botany and things like that, but uh, some overlap, you know, strange arcane plants and the like. Thank you for the recommendation. Uh, we we go unless we have something else to. Uh, we we talk have about? a lamp we need to talk about. Oh yeah, the oh, lamp. Yeah, oh, fuck. the lamp. Yeah, just go, just go. Leave the lamp. What's what's to worry about with the lamp? Don't <sighs> worry about the lamp. So. We figured you might be the best person to talk to about this, but we have this lamp that seems to have a living flame in it. And... Well, I mean, an enchantment of... It's a little a bit living more... living flame is not the most complicated? little more than that um yeah, we tried um, to get rid of it and it came back and it did also kill a guy i was gonna 
break into that a little more slowly, but yeah, well, we don't even know if it actually killed him. It kind of lit him on fire and like burned him. Well, he's sure alive. dead now. Is he? I mean, uh... <laughs> Garrett just gets a <laughs> over the ear, just like a <laughs> right. I hope. Yeah. Uh-huh. It, uh, um, do you want to take out the who, who's carrying the lantern? I think Are we, we carrying it, it around. Oh, I, I don't yeah. think we have been, but I would. Oh, we don't have it. Oh, okay. Here. I mean, yeah. If you know one thing about the lantern, it's that you can't get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I would have brought it specifically if we were coming here. So I'll pull yeah. it out, and um, I, I'll also say like, um, and also to be clear, I do think this is. Uh, a highly sought after um, magical artifact that I think the excuse me the soldiers of the blue are looking for in Fort Twenty Soul and uh, and maybe the brights and I don't know it seems like a lot of people are after it and it's powerful and like we mentioned we tried to get rid of it and it won't leave us so. Yeah, we basically threw it into the middle of the ocean and it just magically came back. Yes. You can see a level of worry starting to grow across his face. First it's intrigue, then concern, then outright worry. Mm-hmm. Understandable. To be honest, I'm kind of half of the position that no one of any power should really have access to this. <clears throat> I don't know if you have a vault or something here at the Lucian Ray where you lock away uh, incredibly dangerous artifacts or anything like that. Well, for a litany of reasons I'm not going to tell you. That would make sense, because if we don't know if that vault exists or not, we can't, you know, other people can't decide to uh, acquire items from that vault without permission. That's a, not a bad idea. He spends a moment staring at it, investigating it. He doesn't He doesn't seem as interested in the item itself as in whatever he's doing with it. Like the item itself seems almost secondary to um the amount of scrolls and etchings that he's producing. Um, He goes into another drawer and he pulls out what seems like a couple of little vials and then what seems like shavings of silver or something and like sprinkles a circle around it. Uh, He then lifts it up and uh, takes a hand and as he meets his pointer and thumb together, he then like it starts to like glow and his pointer finger begins to sizzle slightly and he wipes the... uh, he wipes the silver that was in the circle and it almost melts onto the parchment below it, creating a very complicated sigil. Um, As he finishes flourishing it, you can see that uh, there is also silver melted into the tip of his finger, which he doesn't seem to be worried about or doesn't seem to notice. And then he places it back down. And as he does you see it immediately like the flame is getting bigger and bigger now. Um, I will pull out the, like the, the, the resin that I got from the lab. um, And just sort of put it on the table. Like um, this is a resin that was developed to sort of resist the magical fire that the lantern produces just in case it's needed. 
and do you, does he notice that the flames are getting larger? Oh, he notices. He just doesn't seem to care. Okay. This lamp does not. Uh, this lamp does not matter. That is, you are too focused on, on what is in front of you, and not enough on what is not. Is it the fire itself. He gives a nod. This is very dangerous. Yeah. This cannot stay here. Wait, so this shit. is a gin. A, a gin, like a like a a genie. He gives a slow nod. The coin that grant a wish. Yes. A powerful one. Can't... If we can't leave it here, where do we take it? He shakes his head. I do not know. But this... This is a prison for a very powerful being. We have... He looks and motions his left thumb over the crack. There are two wishes left. It looks like one was already used. Yeah. That That's probably be... what led to... Yep. The man burning. He holds a his right hand now and runs the silvered finger across the crack closes his eyes and a moment later just shudders that first that was hatred that was everything yeah it it was a wish for a man down. to live in a purgatorial torture Unending forever. Yeah. You can call it that. That man will never die. Whatever happens, he will continue to feel, he will continue to be conscious. He will always know what is happening to him. Brian's looking at Street Eagle. He can't die. Professor Kion just shakes his head. That was the wish. Could we wish him dead? Could try. Well, it's the last time a wish was involved. Uh, the entire house that it was wished upon or wished around was burnt down. Yeah. And the individual who cast the wish was burnt to a crisp. So. Yeah. Not too keen on trying that. This could do so much, but it is so dangerous. There is no safety, but... Were I to... Recommend a... And he just kind of like slowly thinks... Course of action. It would be to... Go out far away from everyone else. Wish for something lovely, like a banana, or to have a water skin refilled. 
and let it free far away from anything else. Where it would hopefully disappear into the eternal nothingness of the world, not to find its way back to civilization. Is, uh, is this a situation where if, uh, is this a situation where whatever wish we make will be turned against us or something like that? It just wants out. Wants to be free the same as anyone else. Tell me, young Edarsh. Or, fuck. Young Rowan. <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> Tell me, young Rowan. If you were trapped in a prison, someone came and asked you to give them something, and you could, would you do it? If it meant leaving? But if they stood there and ignored you, tried to Pawn you off on someone else, would you grow bitter? This I'm not being. worried about the second wish, but I'm worried about the third wish. Do you know what I mean? I know not what this was supposed to be used for, but... You say these soldiers of the blue. Is that a... Them. Do not know what that is, but... They're a, a... Mercenary company out of Fortuny Soul. A division of... The Blades. And this was probably... Sharon's... The minute you're being overrun, the minute things go wrong, run away with. I could hold this, I could stare into the flame, and I could say that I wish I was the most powerful man in Ortovishte, and it would probably grant that. just wants to be free. Then it will pay whatever price. We could just wish that it was free, couldn't we? Could certainly try. Something very powerful captured this, and this is... He shakes at the lantern. This is old. It is brass, but... He motions to the bottom. You can see here that... These... Screws here. And he motions to three of them. These fasteners were... They're not original. These are... Iron. This has not been altered since it was created, since it captured this. The only time, the only way I could see someone using iron instead of brass to replace something as simple as these fasteners would be. Time long ago, this, this was created before, far before the Fall of Ivan Ferris. No rust, no damage. Would still be there after it was enchanted. This thing has seen a purgatory, a misery. It has watched 
decades, centuries go by, and been able to do nothing. Perhaps t trapped in some basement somewhere, perhaps in someone's pack. Just wants to be free. Cannot speak to its goals, state. But I think I would want to be free. Be greedy. Don't be greedy. Use it for something powerful. Use it for something weak. The longer you wait, I fear the worse it will get. The more it will grow to despise you. Okay. Okay. I will, uh, put my hand out to take it back from him. Um... He motions it to you, and as he does, he then uh, uses his thumb to wipe away a bit of the melted silver, breaking the circle. And as he does, you see the silver on his finger fade away as well, falling back into nothingness. Um. Oh, by the way, um, Mira, do you... Maybe we should also get rid of the Vercanum heart. Um, I think maybe we can hand that off to him if he's interested. I'm so You're saying you... out loud? What? Yeah, I'm saying it out loud, I think. I don't know how else he'd be communicating that to you. I, yeah. I guess not. Yes, I have come into possession of a Vercanum heart, and honestly, the first time I mentioned it to someone, they acted like I was holding a... I don't know, a bomb. Pretty similarly to how you reacted to the lantern, so I kind of don't want anything to do with it. Um, that seems like potentially more something that you would work with, um, if you'd like it. He just kind of curiously looks up at you. This is a large offering. It's been impressed upon me that it is very dangerous. And frankly, I don't want the responsibility. Um... I suppose you do have enough these days. Yeah. Um, I do yeah, so Mira. wish we had the opportunity to work together, Mr. Rohan. Yeah, you and me both. I will make sure to put in a good word for you at the next of the hearings uh, for new admittance. Thank you. I think I might have burned my bridge with the uh, bird, so I think he might veto any any uh, any acceptance. But we'll uh, I'll oh, we I'll build it then. I assure you, it's yeah. worth it. There's more you're going to get out of your time here than you are out there wandering. Getting into trouble with the soldiers of the blue and finding these things. Yeah. Lucian Ray would be lucky to have someone such as yourself. Rowan is like on the verge of tears. Oh, like holding it together. Um. Thank you. Um. Yeah. Mira, do you have the Vercanum Heart on you, or...? You bet she does! 
Amazing. She carries that thing around everywhere. Amazing. Yeah. Um, That's why yeah, it's not in your inventory. <laughs> yeah, I gave it to Mira. No, I was saying that's why it's not Mira's inventory. Oh. Because <laughs> she carries it oh, around no. everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess if you will hand that over to him, maybe he can take it, I guess. We will certainly be able to find a good use for this. Great. She looks a little reluctant, but she'll do so. Um... <laughs> I don't know if it can hear or anything, but I've been talking to it. So, if you could be kind to it, I would appreciate it. Rowan does start crying at this. <laughs> Quietly. Mr. Rohan, perhaps. The Lucian Ray needs in you not a student, but a recruiter. You are certainly impressive and continues your surprise. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Tyrell. And I do so hope that Miss Silver, Professor Silver, is able to find your information. On that note, I guess we should go over there and do that now. Yeah. Oh, hurry. Her last, uh, her last lecture is finished at the uh, greenhouse after sundown. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, I guess we will say our farewells and head over. Um, I, I, uh, wanted to ask him something too yeah. but um if, if you guys want to move fine. on no, that's... Yeah. no no go for it okay um so Frey will step forward and uh, sorry if I could just have uh, one more moment of your time I know we've taken up so much already you've given me gifts beyond anything any pupil has ever done the least I can do is give you a few more moments Uh, well, th this one isn't about a, um, a strange magical item or uh, a heart that I really don't understand. Um, he kind of like looks over at, at Mira and, and Rohan's crying face. Um, uh, but myself, I've been... Uh, well, Greymane had actually recognized some kind of power in me that I don't understand. I see things sometimes. I, I feel things sometimes. Uh, emotions imprinted onto an area and there are times where I, I black out. I lose time. He narrows his eyes. Black out, you... Has this always happened? What did Greymane say that he saw? Uh, it was... it was a while ago, but I... I believe he said... that it was something... Uh, sorry, I actually have this written down somewhere. Where is it? It, it said it was a, a powerful and, and rare magic that he'd never seen before. Uh... He did always like to be dramatic about these things. I, uh, 
I may know someone who may know something. He kind of narrows his eyes. And... Certainly curious. What happens when you black out? Exactly. Uh, Frey will look at the group. <laughs> I, th I think you all would know better than I. Um, some pretty powerful magic. Um, it seems like something is working through him. Um, and we've seen... His voice changes, his... Eyes mannerisms kind of yeah his manner mannerisms change and his eyes change like Rohan said it's almost like something else is almost uh, working through him or coming through him um yeah there's magic where spirits are created and will aid us in whatever we're dealing with or uh there's I don't know, I'm trying to... Was, uh... Was the Abyss thing? That was Frey, right? That was Frey, yeah. Yeah. Um, one time there was an... A black hole Abyss that was created that... Swallowed a man whole who was threatening to harm us and... Um, threatening to kill us, not just harm us. Um, Uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot. I may, uh, and at this point he turns back to Frey. Have you ever heard of the death-touched mind? No, I, I don't believe so. What about, uh, an old, um... And he kind of, like, purses his lips, and you can tell he's having trouble kind of, like, remembering what he's trying to say. And he's, like, you know, he's got, like, that problem where it's, like, at the tip of his tongue, and he just... What about, um, what? A Rickorian, um, Amandir scene. Yeah, actually, we... We, we met somebody... Uh, far from here, and uh, he had mentioned that to me, that I, I think he was one of them. If you are what you believe you are, that is very dangerous. It is not anything that is taught or understood, really, here at the Lucian Ray. You see, what Mr. Rohan here does, it is... It is using... The world, bending it, understanding how, and having that gift. Yours is something else there was someone I know he has come to me a couple of times for assistance he has a death touched mind he has a death touched mind he describes it as being on the brink, standing in a doorway, staring between both worlds. Being right there. Being... in the middle. Ray shudders. And... Who is this person? How? Where can I find them? Are they? Are they in the city? He is not one to stay in one place too long. He has come to me looking for items, looking for 
answers when he does not understand something that he thinks proper scholarly answers can give. I know him as Bart. I do not know where he comes from. I found him on the road, a scarred man who has never seen a day of comfortable sleep in his life. If you are a death-touched mind, if you have one of those, I'm sorry. Your I would pray, I would beg, I would do anything to hope that you are wrong. As for my poor, poor friend, but he did not know a day of rest, a day of happiness, a day of relaxation the last 20, 30 years. I will pray that you do not follow that same path. I think I should as well. Do you have any idea where I would even start looking for this this man? Ask for a man with grey hair messy beard, wearing tattered clothes, and scars on his face. And if you find a way to differentiate that from every other vagabond that survived the Black Sun, well... He'll be back. He always comes back. I will keep a lookout then. Th thank you for... And he kind of just trails off. <laughs> Not exactly the news he wanted. Uh, but, um... And he'll, he'll look back at the others. Uh, we, we should go find your, your other professor before they... Step out for the day. Um, of course, uh, the rest of you may go. Um, Mr. Frey, if you would, just a moment. There may be one other thing I can do to help. Um, you all have all right. given me so much. You all go on ahead. I'll catch up. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll... All we'll right. Go on. Yeah, I, we'll make that. I am just going to do a small ritual so that when the time comes, when I do speak with him, I will be able to contact you. Oh, oh all right. Just be once. Fret not, you may awaken in the night, you may be doing something, maybe on a latrine, I cannot say. Well, you hear I my know. voice in your head, which is just my way of telling you it is time, and he is here, and I've let him know. Thank you, that's... Well, sounds better than I thought it would be when you asked me to hang back. And he spends a few minutes enchanting a rolled up parchment, seemingly binding its power to you, and eventually sees you off. Alright. And yeah, Frey will go and uh, catch up with the others. Meanwhile, the rest of the group. 
making your way all the way to the other side to a small greenhouse beyond the courtyard on the northern side of the uh, of the Lucian Ray beyond the massive amount of lecture halls and other offices and just not quite excess in the same way as something like a party would be here but it is still an enjoyable amount of excess and you get to the you can see there is an older woman maybe maybe in her 60s ish got kind of curly hair wearing a very fancy hat some simple but thick robes um, holding a small um, a small potted plant and there are about half a dozen students surrounding her And she just kind of uh, turns toward you as you're kind of approaching. The The door of the greenhouse is open. And she kind of places the potted plant down and holds a hand over it. And then she holds a hand over another plant that is nearby. This one, it looks like the potted one is little more than a stem. Like, you can see, like, the beginnings of a green stem in it. And then... Nearby, there is what looks like a small tomato plant. And she holds her hands and utters something and presses a thumb onto the soil of the small pot, uh, wraps a hand around the vine of the tomatoes, and you see as her thumb begins to sizzle, the dirt begins to dry and crackle. And the tomato plant begins to bloom, and a couple of small tomatoes immediately grow and ripen. The, um, the small, um, pot that had the little sapling in it looks like it is a pot full of ash now and, uh, she finishes and spends a moment discussing and that of course is going to be something I'm expecting of all of you each and every one within the month that gives you we will say two weeks and change and I will expect all of you to be able to handle this sort of thing. And, uh, now, now. You all have places to go and people to see and dogs to pet. Go off. I have visitors. And they quickly head out and she turns back to you, Lot. Hello, um, you are not students. I do not have any meetings. You do not look like financiers. You do not look like anyone that I currently have a job for. She kind of like scans you each up and down. What can I help you with? Ah, uh, yes. Hi, my name is um, Mira Tyrell. I was wondering if you might be able to tell me anything about my father, Silas Tyrell. Tyrell! Why oh. you are young? You are so young. I'm a little bit older than I look. But I'm adopted as well. She kind of narrows her eyes. Oh. Whatever happened with them? So you have a sister then? Um... um I don't... It began uh, with a P, I believe. Strange Perdita. name. Yes! Perdita. Yes, how she, is she? 
Well, she passed away, oh. unfortunately. That was um before I was alive. I am so sorry. That is absolutely horrible. Oh. Hopefully these saints curse me for my hubris. <laughs> you didn't know. What? What can I help you with? Um, I will put my... I will shut my mouth before my feet end up there. I just... Well, my father went missing uh, some 13 years ago when... I've been looking for him and trying to find out any information that I can about him. Um, I fear that I didn't know him as well as I could have. Oh, that is, that is so horrible. So, so very horrible. Oh, um... Perhaps, uh, um, I, uh, I, I knew him for a, only a brief period, uh, close, did we, did we work? Um, for, for the most part, we were, um, we were colleagues in, um, uh, he helped me when I was getting started as a, as a professor here with, um, all of this. What you saw, what I was doing, that is all foundational to his work, uh, living transmutation. What I was doing is, there was a finite amount of life between two things. And much like how you can pour one cup into another to fill it with water and empty one, you can do that with life as well. It is very complicated, but he made it possible to understand. What, um, the man was a genius. What, uh, what do you think that you didn't know? It's been so long since someone's even asked me about him. It's probably. When did you say that your father went missing? Thirteen years ago. She kind of blinks a little bit. Do you have a, another sister? A, a, a cousin? Anyone else? Not that I know of. Are you sure? If I do, then I don't know about them. I was never told anything. Was this... It would have been about 15 years ago. Maybe it could have been less. The last time anyone mentioned the name Tyrell, this this lovely woman, Rasheel, came asking about him, saying that she knew his family needed to see him, but wanted to know what had happened, what he was doing, why he had left. Are you Rasheel? I... yes? Rasheel Blakely? I... I did not get her last name. She was... lovely, wearing a... it was warmer. She was wearing a nice dress. Simple heels. What? When was this? About 15 years ago. Well, I'm I... sorry to inform you, but we have reason to believe she's also uh, passed away. Oh. Oh, no. Is, is something happened? Am I, am I in danger? No. Not that we believe, no. It was unrelated to the, the Lucian Ray. 
Yes, she she came by asking what had happened, and I mean, I told her I didn't know the extent of his work, just that he left, moved out to Corval a while ago. Assumed it was something family related. All she said was that she had something about his family and really wanted to see him. Is this someone that I should know? Who? Professor Silver? No, the... the... the Ra Rashil? No. If, if, I imagine then that Mira is like blinking curiously at the other two. Well, I, I mean, Rashil is the person who Ozzy was going after. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah the one who <laughs> earlier today he said like, like I got rid of her and took over and like I'm in charge. Yeah. Of Zeta, okay. So okay. I don't. I don't know why I didn't connect to. So no. Yeah. Them. No. That's fair. But yeah. So that's why we're like, this is two different plot threads. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to think to Garrett, like, do you remember exactly what, what, um, I mean, I wasn't there, but what exactly he said about Rashil? Did he say that he got rid of her or that he killed her or? Uh, it, I think he said took care of her, right? Yeah, took care of her. And he did say he was intending to kill her from the beginning. So that that's probably where... Uh, that particular yeah um, although I guess I yeah I think we did figure out that he was trying to kill her um, I remember that he wanted revenge I guess but I yeah I actually heard him say he wanted to because I was reading his mind I think I think I did figure out he wanted to kill her um okay anyway Everyone's just staring at her. <laughs> there's yeah, a fucking I mean. mind conversation going on. Uh, and then there's Streak and Frey who are just like, Frey's dealing with his own shit and Streak's like, hmm, higher learning. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. Oh. I didn't realize I was there. I was assuming that, I mean, you said Frey was catching up, so. Yeah. yeah I mean, if you want to add Frey at an A point for any of this conversation, feel free. Um. Yeah, so Frey is going to ask... Um. Uh, this, uh, Rashil, do you remember if she said anything about, like, what she did? Uh, no? I, it was like 15 years ago. I'm surprised I wouldn't remember the name. So it was a weird one. I'd never met a Rashil before, and hadn't had anyone ask me about Tyrell in a long time. She said it had to do with his family, and. I said he had already left. He worked with us and then moved out to Corval. Certainly a strange coincidence. Now look back over at the others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very interesting that this is related. It makes me wonder if Rashil. I'm thinking this at at Frey, um, rather than, or no, I sorry at Rohan, rather than thinking it out loud. Um, it makes me wonder if Rashil was involved in the explosion at the, um, at the Viacor estate, you know, at my estate, because they were involved with, um. With the corrupt guards. Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> above the table, Lee messaged me earlier saying the same thing. So, but um, <laughs> yeah, I. I think that's definitely possible. Um, that's. Yeah, I mean, I guess if she's not dead, then she might be in Corville. 
sounds like that's her last known whereabouts. Can we, um, Streak saw her, right? I, I guess I'll ask out loud. Wait, Streak, you saw her, right? Or you saw who we think is her? Rochelle? Yeah. I don't think so. I saw a random woman who was following Frey around. Okay, was that a guard or? Just a woman. Didn't... Okay. Okay, fair enough. Um... While you guys are having this conversation, Professor Silver's just here blinking and trying to figure out how to like exit this conversation that she's apparently no longer a part of. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's all Mira. I'm, uh, I'm so very sorry about what has happened. Um, if you ever want to talk about your father again, you can always come by my office. Uh, before sunrise generally is going to be your best time to find me there. All right. Um, thank you very uh, much. Yes, please. Just um, remember to shut the door here when you're done. You do not want bugs getting in and messing with the experiments. And she kind of like shimmies around you guys and exits. Okay. Well... Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess other than us hearing Ozzy say that he took care of Rasheel, we don't actually know if she's dead or anything, right? Well, or he took she... over. She wouldn't just... Well, I mean, he might have driven her, driven her out of town or something. Unlikely, but he could have. Yeah, I mean... But this is where getting in touch with those guards would be uh, handy, because they would... Yeah. They would know if... You know, if we can find this guard and get in with some of the... Yeah. Well... Um, this has been a lot of information across the board. Um, yeah, do we have anything else we want to do while we're here at the Lucian Ray? I feel like we've done a lot already. <laughs> it's been a busy day. Um, yeah. though I, I do wonder, uh, Mira. Uh, yes. Horrible. I know we already talked a bit about perhaps going there, but if you're from there, your father left to go there, and if uh, this Michelle was looking for him 15 years ago, maybe somebody there knows her. Maybe. He was fairly well known in the town yeah, it's, a, it's a long shot but well it's a possibility mm -hmm. uh, otherwise if anybody has any suggestions for a place I could maybe set up a bit of uh, buying I don't know where to start though A bit of buying? Oh, buying. Spying. Of, spying. Oh, spying. Enchanting okay. stuff so that he can look through. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess back at the Via Court Estate, it's massive. Who are By the we way, trying to spy on? Well, my, my first thought was actually the that place that Ozzy was 
um, hiding out in, but clearly it's the Braves are taking care of it now. Um, by the way, I'll just throw this out there for us all to think about. Um, I think we should think about if we want to actually use the lantern. Because I, I know that we've sort of all... I think... Originally decided that it, we don't want that kind of power, but it doesn't seem like it's necessarily a weapon. And... You know, I think something that we might want to do is see if it's even, uh, you know, is is it is it sentient? Like, can we communicate with it as it stands? Because if we can communicate, it obviously might not be able to speak. But you know, you can do the old like, you know, blink once for no, blink twice for yes, mm -hmm. and. If that's the case, if it can understand us, then first of all, I think one of the things we might want to do is maybe try to apologize for throwing it off the boat if it is fully sentient and coming to hate us. Um, and we don't want it to burn us alive because it hates us. Might want to just be like, oh, hey, sorry about that. Didn't know you were sentient. We'll take better care of you going forward. Uh, not sure what to wish for yet, but we'll wish for something as soon as we... You know what I mean? Like, something like that. Yeah. Um, and I think if we can talk to it, I think a good question to ask would be... You know, does someone... You know, it, can it perform wishes without hurting people? You know, can it, will it perform wishes without hurting people? Because if that's the case, then, you know, it'll, I, I would feel better about using it if that's that case. Yeah, although, if the answer is no, will it tell us the truth? I mean, it's hardly, clearly its incentives are that it wants to get out. I imagine it would lie to well, convince us. Not necessarily, but I can certainly see where that would be. But I mean, I think you're right. I think it's still worth us uh, trying to communicate with it. Um, we can see if we can make that happen. Um, but yeah, if, you know, I guess everybody think about what they think would be a good use of the of the wishes if we were to use them. Um, if we were to use them, um, if that first wish is what we think it was, Sprig, would you want to undo that? He kind of pauses for a moment and then just slowly nods. I think if possible, then that should be one of them. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Um, remind me, did Mira communicate with the lamp already? Or was it more of like a sensing? Uh, I think she sensed that it wanted to make a bargain or oh, something like right. that. Okay, yes. And what a simple bargain it is. I'll give you whatever you want. You let me out. <laughs> I feel like I've heard that one before. Alrighty. Well, we are just standing in this greenhouse now. Do we want to go back to the the state? Yeah. Cool. 
maybe think about going to Corvell. Um, I guess back at the estate, Frey can set up spying if if you would like. Um, well, I, I need to actually put it where we'd want to be spying. Oh, right. Oh, the the fire thing? Uh, oh. yes, or or I could do it with uh, with stone or oh, or yeah, any right. sort of liquid. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, and you do have a, a lovely home, Garrett, but I I don't think I need eyes in it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Right. <laughs> I I was thinking this was like a like a scrying situation, not like a like a eavesdropping thing. Okay, <laughs> makes sense. Yes, correct. Um. Man, your magic is so strange. Okay. Um, <laughs> a death-touched mind. Fascinating. All right. Um, yeah, I guess to the extent that anywhere would be useful, maybe the Bastion is the only thing I can think of. Because hypothetically, the what's-their-faces will be there. Um the do call guards mm. that are in his pocket but other than that i don't think we know where ozzy's gonna be so and i feel like the do call guards william could probably tell us if something's happening there but although if they know that he's with us then maybe not but yeah it, it could be worth a shot though a little bit might be a little suspicious yeah. uh, unless uh, I I enchant something to bring inside and if one of you want to sneak it inside I could give it to William but I, I don't want to uh, get him in trouble yeah whatever you want you think it's worth it Oh, by the way, I have a present for you. I don't know if it'll, if it's useful for you or interesting at all, but I like pull out the dancing candle <laughs> and hand it to Frey. It's like, I know you like candles. This one, if you, uh, I like, I, I like show Frey how it works that you can, what is it? Like you clap and it turns on and then you can like, Snap and it no, whenever it's whenever. lit, it it doesn't ever burn out. So it's like an ever burning candle whenever it's lit, and okay. whenever it's got like a beat, it'll dance to it. Okay, cool. I will show Frey. Is it the Wait, fire that dances I... or the candle that dances? The, the candle fire. or the fire? Wait, really? Yeah. The fire. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. I was like, wait, what? This is a very different situation. If the candle dances, <laughs> we're in fucking Fantasia now. Yeah. Okay, so if the fire is dancing, and as Rohan is demonstrating, is it like like the fire just kind of like you know flickering in rhythm, or does it form like a little person? Ah, uh, no, it just flickers in rhythm. Okay, okay. No, it doesn't become a little person. <laughs> Doing the fucking <laughs> macarena in rhythm at like three hundred BPM. Well, with Rohan's magic <laughs> items, I have to ask. <laughs> I flipped the coin. <laughs> <laughs> Ray takes the candle, a little, a little skeptical. Uh, well, thank you. I'm sure I will put this to excellent use. It uh, at least seems a little more okay, low key than your uh, other toys. Yeah, I, you know, she offered it and I took it. So here we are. Okay. Well. All right. Uh, now you guys are heading out of the greenhouse. <laughs> yes. Correct. Oh. We close the door. All right. And back to the vehicle estate. Yes. All right. Um. It is after sundown. When you arrive back to the vehicle estate, what is the plan? After sundown. Yeah. Dinner and go to sleep. Well, obviously fill fill Viv in on what we found so far. Um, go to sleep, and then I I I do think 
one of our best things at this point is kind of to see what comes up with the guards and see if we can maybe get over to um, Cor... Corvel. Carvel. Get some ice cream. At Corval? Yeah, at Carvel. Oh, oh <laughs> ah, ha, ha, there we go. Um, Corval, yeah, get over to of, Corval. Of note regarding your uh, your relative uh, harem, uh, Julius has uh, taken to chasing squirrels outside with vehement rage and has become the menace of the guards because he barks a lot. Oh, that no. sounds about right. Oh, I thought he was going to be a sweetheart. He's a menace. Okay. Just because well, he barks a lot doesn't mean he's not a sweetheart. He can still cuddle up. I, I mean, all dogs are sweethearts to their owners. Yeah, exactly. I that's, meant, that, that's all that matters. To to everyone. Uh, yeah, no, he just seems to want to play all the time. Well, that's fair, I guess. Um... Roland has been missing since this morning. He headed off, and no one's heard from him since. That's not good. Uh, you guys already know what's going on with Bill Abney. Um, Cassie refuses yeah, to best. leave the house. Oh yeah, Streak, you still have to kill her. Actually, I she had. I thought far it was... away from her. Yeah. Is Molly there? Uh, yes. I Sorry, I thought there was more to that. Um, and Molly uh, has been helping in the kitchen with the uh, the chef. Really? Okay. Is she poisoning Streak's food? Uh, no. Uh, the reports are essentially, so occasionally she just kind of holds the knife and stares, but otherwise she's been a decent help. Oh my god. She's so <laughs> scary. I love her. I mean, I hate her, but I love her. She did head out last night and came back in the middle of the night. And apparently she had to, uh, she had handed a very bloody cloak to someone and said it needed to be cleaned and they just threw it out and bought her a new one. God, that's, I adore her. That's not alarming. Does somebody want to talk to her about this? Uh, she insisted it was cow's blood. I mean, I guess that's better than people is blood. It... Is it, is it, is I mean, it's actually... better than specifically people blood. Ryan's not going to touch her. But yeah. do we know she's not I'm lying? I'm not talking to her. Do we know she's not lying and that it actually is cow's blood? No. Are, should she be referring to people, you know, sheeple as cows? Maybe. Can I just walk up to Molly and just be like, listen, I'm going to ask you once and I'll believe whatever you tell me. Was it cow's blood? No. Okay. <laughs> Was it people blood? Yes. Was it Ozzy's blood? No, we saw him today. This was last night. Oh, this was last um, night. Never mind. Shoot, you're right. Okay. Fuck. Um. Ooh. Whose blood was it? She kind of like pauses for a moment. There were maybe ten people. Um, they're not dead. Where are they? She kind of pauses for a moment. They are travelers outside. Yeah, what 
What did they do? I offered to fight them. Oh, Fight Club. You offered to fight them and they accepted? Yes. I said Why? if they beat me, I would give them everything I own. But if I beat them, I got to stab them once. <laughs> Why? Mostly the arms. I said why, not where. Oh. <laughs> because you said I shouldn't kill people. I mean, yeah. Streak nods as if this film makes perfect sense. Well, I guess they agreed to it. You told them about the stabbing beforehand, right? Some of them. <laughs> what do you mean by some of them? Well, some of them... Some just ran after the first time. I, I broke one of their ankles. She kind of pauses for a second. I wasn't fighting fair, and they got mad about that. One of them's probably dead because they got mad and tried to kill me, and I was just defending myself. That's I where mean, most of the blood on the cloak from last night came from. I mean, look, on the scale of what you're Do you want to come with me about, tonight? I really, really don't. I really, really don't. Uh, take Streak with you. No? They might want to go with him. her. <laughs> Zane might want to go with her. Mira doesn't <laughs> sleep. Mira, go with her. You can yeah. be her conscience, please. No. You can hold your own, too. I, I don't know about that first thing. <laughs> What's the thing you always say, Rohan? Not my monkeys? <laughs> not my monkeys, not my circus. I can't okay, believe you Molly. guys forgot that Molly's a fucking maniac. Okay, Molly. Here's here's the agreement I will make with you, okay? If somebody agrees to the terms and then and they agree to you stabbing them, and then you win, then you can stab them. Okay? That, that's what Is she's that doing. Fair? That was my understanding was what she was doing. She said not all of them. She said she wasn't fighting fair, and she said she didn't tell all of them about the stabbing no, first. No, most of the time, I... I... And at this point, she starts going into... She spends the next probably ten minutes going into how she has created... Um, essentially, there's a thicket of trees that she hangs out around, where she has created a number of traps, including a... Um, like a side where like a roll of spikes comes flipping around a tree and stabs people in the leg and all the way up to like the ribs things like that um she has also dug a couple of holes and covered them in sharp sticks and then layers of leaves yeah this is so much work you don't even get to stab them in this situation i do afterwards after oh, i win we've been here out of character, how long have we been here? Four days, maybe? No, try two. What the fuck? Yeah, two nights you've been here. Holy. So um, she was out there on the first night we got into town doing The, the second night. Oh, so she set this up last and night? murdered two people in one night. Yeah, all of this was last night. Okay, Molly, if somebody agrees to the terms that if you beat them, then you can stab them, then you can stab them. One time, as, as agreed, okay? As a treat. <laughs> as a treat. 
Uh, she um, at this she point, just kind I'll, of I'll accept consent. Okay. Do you she understand? just kind of like narrows her eyes at you. We're not my keeper. You're right. But... This is more just to keep the cops from bothering you. But if they haven't been bothering you, then I mean, I... I've been trying to convince Garrett, Cassie no. to come with me. These people have been... I think it would cheer her up. These people have been specifically seeking you out to try to beat you, correct? They're not just trying to, like, go out into the woods to take a leak and falling into your traps. No, I wait and offer it to them. <sighs> Molly, you're correct that I don't have any place to tell you what to do. But if you don't comport with what my personal morals are, then my personal morals dictate that I will have to stop you. And I would rather not do that because you're my friend, hopefully. But if you're hurting people, then we maybe can't be friends. Give me a charisma convince. Mira already doesn't want to be friends with her. <laughs> You're allowed to do whatever you want, but... Her face I scrunches up and she turns towards Strieg. Come with me tonight. How about that? That's fine. I look to the others like I need their permission. Please go. Okay. Mira does not look happy about any of this. Streak also does earring. not look happy about this. I give you my earring. I reluctantly take it and slip it in my pocket for now. Okay. She seems almost excited to be bringing someone along. I, I, I guess you guys missed the part where she said she's been trying to get Cassie to go out. I heard. Okay. I heard that All right. she thinks it would be good for Cassie, but Cassie yeah. doesn't want to leave the the her room because she's afraid that Streeg will kill her slash or she might kill Streeg. And yeah. yeah. Um and so she like almost like she doesn't quite have a skip at her step, but she is very excited, obviously, now to have someone with her on her extracurricular activities. And um the last thing you guys hear as she's, like, prepping Strieg is... It is very satisfying watching them beg for bandages when they are bleeding out. Fuck! <laughs> you will try it. It will be good. No, I will not! You will change your mind. He shoots a look over his shoulder as they walk away like, dear god. And this is where Rohan goes, not my circus, not my monkey. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> now sure he's we done with it. Do something about this? This seems bad. I did do something about it. I sent Streak with her. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> right, I all I know is that. Molly scares me a little. A little? Yeah. It's hard enough being good for myself. I can't also be responsible for her conscience. Does Rohan still have the, um, the gin lantern? Uh, yeah. Oh, use your last wish to make Molly normal. Can I? I can I try to see if I can talk to it before going to bed? Yeah, I hand it off. I promise you. I won't make any wishes. Because <laughs> for all I know, I'll burn down the house again. 
and fifth. Uh, last time it blew up. Me. This time it would burn down. Difference. Right. Right. Exactly. Either way, fifth would kill me. Either way. It is unfortunately that time, so as Molly takes Streak out for some uh, some nighttime stress relief. That's like yeah. a euphemism. Uh, as Garrett, you try unsuccessfully, unfortunately, to really communicate with this gin in this oil lamp. As the rest of you finally get rest from this day of ups and downs, from finding something to losing it, from revelations to questions, who knows what is next. But perhaps next week there will be answers, perhaps next week there will be a time skip. We will see. But that is all next week. Because for now, we will be ending tonight's session. I'm so happy that you guys questioned Molly on the bloody cloak. That You know, Ronnie, I'm thinking the same thing. Yep, that is exactly... Ever, ever since the Dreamers anchor torture, I'm just like, yep. Mm. I kind yeah. of don't think so but who knows i am constantly fucking i, I love molly as a character because she's so fucked up i mean it's your brain man hey not your brain not your thoughts yeah oh god you guys got so much you got revelations you got uh you found out fucko made it you found out he probably got his goal with Rasheel. You found out some of the guards are on Fucko's payroll. You found out Rasheel connected to Tyrell. What? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's like that's like three different plot threads that are essentially all connected together. Yeah. And and we also found out that the guard who was involved with the bombing has been transferred per his own request outside the city. And if there's dirty guards, and he's a dirty guard, he may even be involved with Rasheel, and now Ozzy, which means that Ozzy and Rasheel were involved in the, could have possibly invo be involved in the bombing. Well, yeah. how would Ozzy be involved in the bombing when he was stuck out? Well, I guess it was a while ago. If it's, if it's, you know, or he could be part of the group that's part of the, you know. He might not be directly related, but he's tangentially related. Or he might have taken over the group that previously did it. Exactly. Right. Uh, well, I am going to go to bed now, God. but this was fun. Next yeah, next okay. week, uh, I, like I said, there's probably a time skip coming up, so prepare yourselves for what it might be, because it could be a while. Okay. Alrighty. It could be going well I into winter. So. Well, Wake good. That'll give me time to draw up a new character. <laughs> 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 oh, listen, this is the most she's liked streak in a while. <laughs> I don't know if that's good. Oh, good okay. night. Yep. Good Until night. next time, deuces, guys. Have a good night.